going on? Welcome to episode 178. Is that correct? I thought it was 180. Is it 78? Maybe it is I 78. Thought it, I, I thought it was 182. Maybe I, maybe I got that wrong. I'm not sure. Hang on a sec. Let me just do a quick look here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yes, it should be 180. It's not 78. It should be 180. I'll have to fix that. That's Ladies and I gentlemen, thought. we are live! We are live! It should be episode 180, episode 180 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. My name's Dave McRae, coming to you live from the Voice Men Studios in Toronto, Canada. He's Tony Michael in Atlanta, Georgia. I know what you did last summer is getting a sequel. It is currently in development. I know what you're thinking. There was already a sequel in 1998 called I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. There was a direct-to-DVD sequel, the third, the, the second sequel, third in the franchise, called I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer. I never saw it. I don't really give a frog's fat ass about it. But the news has come down that, yes, Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prince we're gonna Jr. We're going to squeeze this nostalgia shit out for every gonna, penny, we're right? We're going to ring it out. <laughs> just ring it out. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, oh, you know, it's good. Good, good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. As Clark it's says in, uh, as, as Clark says in uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's he's, good. he's like, he's like. <laughs> Drinking the eggnog, it's, it's good. good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's Drinking good. the protein shake That's from it. Starbucks, it's That's good. It. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah, that should say 180. I, I don't know why it says 178. I thought I changed that, but I guess I didn't. I'll have to change it in a second. While uh, maybe you're talking, I'll go ahead and change it. Um, there you go. So, uh, yeah, so episode 180, here we are, 20 away from 200, and uh, I know what you did last summer. This, of course, now this is, um, I enjoyed this movie when I saw it. I saw it in the theater back in 1997. This was my sort of introduction to my celebrity crush as a teenager, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Um, she was on Party of Five, of course, before that, but I never really watched Party of Five. Um, I was aware of it. I, you know, you're aware of the shows that are on, but I didn't really watch it. I don't think it's really a guy oh, show. I, I, I was very well aware of Party of Five. That's how I was introduced uh, to Nev Campbell. Uh, oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so, but Bruce and I went to go see I Know What You Did Last Summer in 1997 and uh, we're watching it in the, th I can't remember exactly. I mean, it's 20, what? Five, five years ago, whatever it was. But I remember, no, one, two, three, four, five, 20, 26 years ago. Oh, Jesus, 26 years ago. Fuck. Anyway. Yeah, uh, wasn't it in the run of like Halloween H2O and Scream oh, yeah, and yeah, Urban yeah. Legends oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like it was, all that it was, shit? It was part of the late 90s slasher resurgence. So you had Scream kicked it off. I know what you did last summer. I still know what you did last summer. Scream 2, Urban Legends, The Faculty. H2O. You know, the H2O, Faculty. I love yeah, the it was Faculty. All, <laughs> it was all in there. It was all in there. So um, I, I, as a impressionable 18 year old kid, I'm sitting in the theater and of course on comes Jennifer Love Hewitt. And I'm like, oh my God, who is this vixen? <laughs> who says vixen anymore? What is this? 1940. Um, but I, I thought, wow, is she ever beautiful. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's Jennifer. Love. That's the girl from Party of what? I don't, I don't, cause I didn't really watch it. Like I knew about it and I was like, wow. Right, right, and I was right. just enamored with her. I mean, I just was like, this is great. <laughs> you know, cause you know, you're 18, right? And you know, and, uh, so yes, uh, that was the beginning of my, and then of course, immediately she was, you know, uh, I'll never forget when, um, I knew, I knew it was bad when, when, uh, <laughs> a couple years later, um, I got the same Christmas present four times. Four people bought me the same Jennifer Love Hewitt calendar. I kid you not. My father got me a Jennifer Love Hewitt calendar. My friend Evan got me a Jennifer Love Hewitt calendar. My friend Brian got me a Jennifer Love Hewitt calendar. Or no, I, is it Evan? I think Evan and Brian, my two buds, they they went in on it and got me it together. And then I think my mother got me one. And then when I went back to college, because I was home for Christmas break, I go back to college. I get a knock at the door. My buddy from across the hall is like, Merry Christmas, dude. And I look at him like, this, this, this better not be. I open it up. It's the same, and it's the same calendar. Four of That's the crazy. same Jennifer. And, I, and I'm like, am I really that bad? Like, what? What? The, come on. Come on. Hey, so, man. Hey, 
All I got to say, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Nev Campbell, I call that a party of three. I mean, just, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so yeah, she was my celebrity crush, I guess, you know what, I, I guess, you know, for sure when I was a teenager. But so, um, uh, but I liked the movie too. I did. I didn't not like the movie. I liked it. Yeah, I thought it was all right. I I think it's one. Of, I like the of, first one. I I yeah, didn't. Uh, yes. I couldn't finish this. I could not yes. finish this. I the second one was on Netflix because I had never seen it and whatever. And yeah. I got maybe a. I don't even think I got halfway through it. And I'm like, well, this I saw, fucking sucks. I, I saw the second <laughs> one in the theater as well. But that's because I was going back for Jennifer Love Hewitt at that time, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, so um, but I know what you did last. I know what you did last summer. I like. I don't think the first movie. I don't think it's like amazing. I don't think it's fantastic or anything. But I think it's one of the better of the of those bunch of films that were being released. The first one is one of the better ones of that time. And, sure, uh, it had a good cast too. You had Sarah Michelle cast. Gellar, Ra Ryan Felipe. You know, obviously Freddie Prince Fred Jr. Jr. Yeah, for sure, and for sure, Jennifer Love Hewitt. And so Jennifer it was a Hewitt. solid cast. It was, you know? it was, and um, uh, and then of course they did. I still know what you did last summer, which is certainly watchable, but it's not as good as the first one, not at all. And then they stopped there, and then years later in 2006 they made this straight to DVD third film, which didn't have any of the returning cast. I haven't seen it. I don't know how it connects canonically to the other two or if it does but of course it's called i'll always know what you did last summer which actually you know it's a good title um and and that was it and for years what was what was, was whitney's i'll always love you the theme i have no idea i have no <laughs> idea but you and i on this channel you and i on this channel yeah. ha have been talking about uh, this for a couple of years that, that, that maybe if you, now we don't know if this is going to be a direct sequel to, I still know, I don't think they're going to pretend that I'll always know happened. I'm sure that's just kind of, you know, brushed under the carpet, whether they will include, uh, I still know what you did, and this is the official third one, or right. if it is a direct sequel to the original only, we don't know yet. Um, now, I spoke to somebody well, who, who who is in the know with these kinds of things, and uh, they said to me that, um, funny enough, this has been uh, tossed around for a couple of years. This idea of doing a sequel, trying to bring back Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prinze Jr. has been, you know, uh, 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 on the table of something to explore for the last few years. Now, when the Amazon television series came to be, this individual said to me that uh, they thought, oh, I guess that I, I guess that's it. I guess they've decided instead of doing a sequel with Hewitt and Jr., I guess they decided to go off and do this TV series, which which may have been the case. And had the TV series been successful, then we wouldn't be having this conversation right now but uh, right. Th this person agrees and 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 i tend to agree that maybe since the series was not successful i'm not saying i mean if you liked it that's great but clearly it wasn't successful enough to get you know a few more seasons out of it it was one season and that was it uh it was axed so then i think they kind of maybe went and looked at that other kind of thing they were thinking about a couple of years ago and started to explore that again. And now here we are. So let's jump over to the other screen. And because uh, this is the article that comes from Deadline. Oh, oh and by the way, speaking of um, uh, the other day, the other day I was talking about uh, on a vid of mine, I was talking about Harrison Ford and movie stars and all that kind of stuff. Raquel Welch, Raquel Welch died today at the age of 82. Uh, one of the great... Why does that name sound familiar? Uh, she's one of the great sort of uh, uh, sex symbols of the... Symbols, that's yes, right. Yeah, that's she's, right. And she was in that's quite right. a few films and uh, yes, back in the day. that's right. Okay. So she, uh, she was, you know, one of those legendary sort of titans from uh from an age no longer around anymore she died at the age of 82 today rest in peace raquel welsh um so this comes to us yes from uh deadline this is from uh february the 6th now so about uh just over a week ago I know you did last summer sequel in works at Sony with Jennifer Caitlin Robinson directing Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prince Jr. in talks to return. I think I stand to be corrected, but I think 
the, I don't know if it's still in talks or if it's been confirmed now. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure they're going to return. I'm pretty sure they're going to return. So let me just put on my glasses here and read this. Uh, This says here, exclusive. Following the successful relaunch of Scream, Sony Pictures is looking to blow new life into its own slasher franchise, as sources tell Deadline that Jennifer Caitlin Robinson has been tapped to direct a sequel to I Know What You Did Last Summer. So now, if you take that at face value, that tells us, you know, again, as fans will, oh, I guess since it didn't say I still know what you did last Summer, it must be a direct sequel to the first one only. Not necessarily. They, they, they're just, this could be talking about it in terms of a franchise, right? They're doing a sequel to I Know What You Did Last Summer, like saying, oh, you know, we're doing a Halloween sequel. You know, we're, you know, we're doing a sequel to Halloween. You know, it, it could be, it could be a matter of semantics here. Just, just, just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. But it wouldn't surprise me if they axed I Still Know and just went back to uh, I Know. But nonetheless, uh, Tap to direct a sequel to I Know What You Did Last Summer with Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prince Jr. in talks to reprise their roles. Insiders say the project is in early development and that Neil H. Moritz... Moritz, 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 I think I'm saying that right, uh, is in talks to return as producer with Leah McKendrick on board to write the script. Uh, One second here, let me scroll down. The original pick uh, follows four young friends bound by a tragic accident who are reunited when they when they find themselves being stalked by a hook-wielding maniac in their small seaside town. The original was a hit and not only led to a sequel, but also helped launch the careers of Hewitt, Prinz, Sarah Michelle Gellar, and Ryan Felipe. I would agree with that. I, I, I would say that... You know, I think Sarah Michelle Gellar was already well on her way to having a career because of Buffy. I was Buffy. about to say, Sarah Michelle was already on her way. Ryan, no one knew until then. He he really did for a brief moment there, that late 90s, early 2000s. He yeah. had a nice run. He, he know, did. He had, a, he had a nice 100%. 100%. Um, but I get what they're saying. Uh, sure. Plot for... Plot details for this in for this latest installment are unknown. While McKendrick is penning the pick, the idea for the new film came from Robinson and McKendrick, who blew away studio executives when they pitched this idea for a sequel last fall, especially given the recent success of the Scream franchise. That film was recently relaunched with original cast members returning, and the idea of bringing back original cast members to draw in old old school fans while also adding fresh faces to relaunch the series was too good for the studio to pass up. Another big factor was the recent success of Robinson's Netflix pick do revenge, which was launched for, uh, which was, uh, I think, uh, sorry, the text is still quite small here for its throwback to late nine. Lauded for its throwback to late 90s picks like Cruel Intentions and was something executives know Robinson could tap into when developing the story. Sony also saw it's important to not, uh, also saw it, it, excuse me, Sony also saw it important to not reboot the franchise, but to do a sort of passing of the torch type sequel where original cast members are brought back as a as a new generation of cast members are added to the ensemble, similar to films like Scream or Creed. Once the idea was pitched by Robinson and McKendrick, uh, the next step was getting Hewitt and Prinz back on board, which the two were game, uh, which the two were game for after hearing the pitch. For Robinson, Do Revenge was her most recent directing outing and earned her high marks for a first-time filmmaker. Uh, Prior to that, she was a writer on on Marvel's Thor Love and Thunder and was uh, a consulting producer on Hawkeye. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So I went to the IMDb page of Jennifer Caitlin Robinson and yeah, she is new. Of course, I totally support new filmmakers being, you know, in that similar position myself. <laughs> I think this is awesome. And, and now I, I haven't seen the show that, um, 
I haven't seen the show. I haven't seen anything she's done. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to make sure. Yeah, I, I haven't seen anything that 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 she's done. Um, but if the pitch really did blow away studio executives last fall, who knows? Now, is there a formula to this kind of thing? Sure. You know what I mean? And it doesn't surprise me uh, that they're going to follow a formula that works, right? What do I always say on this channel? That... The studios will look at patterns, they will see what works, and they will do it until it doesn't work, <laughs> you know? And so what we have here is we have Sony and a pitch to Sony, and uh, it is basically, hey, let's do what they did with Scream, but let's do it with I Know You Did Last Summer. So inevitably, what this is probably going to be is going to be about these new group of teenagers who uh, have something happen and they get a crazy text or a crazy Snapchat or a crazy TikTok. I know what you did last summer. Or, yeah, I don't know. And they're all freaking out. Oh my God, oh my God. And then they're like, we need to seek somebody who knows all about this. We need to seek somebody who's been this, you know, who's been through this before. Before. And in comes Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prince Jr., who may or may not be together still. I doubt that. I don't think they should be. That's that, that maybe a little, you know. Um, but uh, that's what I think is going to happen. Freddie Prince and Jennifer are going to be there to essentially assist the newcomers, passing of the torch, be a part of it. They are now legacy characters in that world. And that's what I think is is likely going to happen. That's the formula. You love it with Scream. They're going to try and do it with I Know What You Did and see if it works. <laughs> you know, I know some maybe people want it all about Hewitt and Prince, but uh, I, I don't think that's going to happen. And now maybe it, it, it could even be their their kids. I mean, you you could do it that way. I mean, it, enough time has passed, you know, where it could sure. be their kids. I mean, 20 what, 23, 4, 5, 6, by the time the movie comes out. So, I mean, we're talking like nearly 30 years. I mean, you could easily, you know, have it, maybe they're together, maybe it's their kids. Anyway, Tony, what do you feel about, how do you feel about all this? Well, I, I definitely think this is one of those franchises where you can get away with easily forgetting the sequels uh, because they're very forgettable. Uh, I, like I said, I never got through the second one. I got bored out of my mind. I would have rather stuck my finger in the socket over there. That would have been more entertaining. Um, <laughs> no, for real. It was just like, I was like, this is so fucking boring. Get me out of this movie. Like, I just couldn't finish it. So, um yeah, so if they if they just pick up from where the first film left off, that that's again, I, it's not one of these franchises like Scream or Halloween or uh, Friday or Nightmare or whatever that um, continuity is really important because, like I said, I think the second film is so forgettable that people are just gonna be like, whatever, what yeah. do we got now? So uh, your idea seems to be pretty much right on the nose uh, of what they're gonna do. Uh, you know, it's the formula that worked with Scream and uh it was proven successful like i said i think that was the one thing i liked about the new scream i know some people didn't like it but i liked that the legacy characters were more the the b plot you know what i mean very very and weren't there a lot you know they really focused on giving us this new cast new faces while you know you still seeing the legacy characters sprinkled in throughout the film until the the climax of the movie uh, where they all meet at the house again and whatnot. And you get a little bit more screen time with Nev and, and Courtney Cox and whatnot. Um, so I think you're right. I think in regards to I know, or I still know, whatever the fuck they're going to call it, probably it's going to be just like I know, because everybody seems to be just sticking to just the name and that's it. Uh, like Scream's doing, Scream, Scream, and Scream. Um well It'll probably be like something like that. And like you said, it'll be maybe their kids or maybe a new group of kids experience some shit and, you know, similarity situation, what happened with the characters with Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prince Jr. And they come in to help the day. Maybe Freddie dies and Jennifer's still alive to leave her open to maybe still be in the next one. Something like that. I think I think you're right. And, you know, I mean, it, it pretty much says that in the article, at least that's that's what to expect. And and I mean, maybe that some people 
listening to that, reading that, are disappointed because, you know, they want the entire movie to be all about Jennifer and Freddie and them going through that again. Sure. But, but, you know, you have to look at it from the perspective of longevity. And, you know, the studios are less likely to, it's not that it's impossible, but they're less likely to accept a pitch like that because they're going to say, well, and then what? Like, where d- d- does this right. just keep happening to Jennifer and Freddie over and over and over again? I mean, you know, we what's the what's the long term here? Like, you know, what's the big thing? And they they want new faces. They want fresh faces. They want younger faces. The horror genre primarily appeals to the demographic between eighteen and thirty, and they want people of that demographic and of that age. And and so, but they understand yeah. the value of the legacy characters coming in and being that bridge. And and uh, and that I mean. Maybe they'll appear in a couple of films, but they're not they're they're not the the stars, the the leads. They are there to help usher in this new generation. Unless I you know, I, I get it, I understand it. I think, you know, a lot of people have been saying, well, what are you going to call it? You can't call it. I know what you did last summer. It's no longer last summer. Oh, yes, you can, because I don't think the the focus of the plot is going to be on the events that happened to Jennifer and Freddie. You see, and that's Correct. and that's a Julie and uh, what's his name? What's his name in the movie? Julian. Julian. I forget his name. Chat room. What, what's Freddie? Prince Jr.'s name in, I know what you did last summer. Um, but I think, I think that's what, like, it's, it's not going to be focused on that. So, yeah. so it's yes could you, be something with their kids you know maybe it involves their, their kids, kids. It you could know be their that, kids. i don't know if that i don't know if that's too on the nose you know like i think that i, I think it, i hope they don't but it wouldn't surprise me if uh if they just called the movie i know what you did last summer i know that's probably going to upset a lot of people but um yeah, I, I, I think it's important for people to under... Ray, that's it. Thank you, WJC, Ray, Julian Ray. So right. I don't think... Again, we don't know, but even right there in the article, right? Even right there in the article, they're talking about that. You know, the, uh, sure. ab- about bringing in new faces, younger faces, the, the legacy characters are there to pass the torch. I mean, those those words were used in the article. So I think... In the article. Yeah. So, so that that... I think you're... Your instinct on where this is going to go, I think it's, it's yeah, it's the I formula so. that's working right now. And, you know, hey, if it's, it's working and making money, right, let's, yeah, let's you know. do it. And and that way let's you can, and, and that way it's a new group of kids. Uh, you can call the movie, I, you can call the movie, I Know What You Did. You can call the movie, I Know What You Did Last Summer. Um, I don't think it's going to be, I don't think the title is going to be anything that reflects the events from the first movie in terms of like, I'll always know what you did that summer. That would be a great title for a movie that was solely, solely focused on Julie and Ray. And they were the stars and had nothing to do with new faces. Yeah, it definitely. was a direct sequel. For sure. And you know what? I mean, yeah, maybe... You know, that would be great for people in their 40s, but, you know, for the for the demographic that is going to these films, um, you know, where it is, they they want to get everybody. So we're going to go because we're nostalgic, because we want to see Julie and Ray. And if we have kids of that age, we're going to bring our kids that, you know, as well. Right. Um, and the kids want to go see it because Trap. because the characters in the movie are relatable to them. If it's just, you know, 49 year old Ray and 44 year old Julie, uh, you're not likely to get the, you know, the teeny boppers in there. And, and that's, and that's, that, that's the thing, right? They want to get every, as much people as they can. So they want to hit a couple of demographics. So they go, well, for and here's the thing. Do do, does it have to involve them killing someone too? And someone, you know what I mean? Like maybe no. there, maybe she, maybe the director pitched something that it's not really repeating the same cycle that maybe the, I know what you did last summer could, who knows? It could, maybe it involves bullying. You know, maybe could, they bullied could, someone, could you be know, anything. Oh, whatever, absolutely. you know, it could be, it could be anything. It may not be that same form, you know, cause if it is the same formula of teenagers accidentally killing someone, try to bury the body, then someone comes back to seek revenge. I would feel very like, well, you just really repeated the same shit and all you did was just give us new characters and gave us a few legacy characters. Um, I mean, Scream more or less did that, but how far can you... Well, I'm hoping this new Scream 6 really goes outside the box here and gives us something new. That's fingers crossed on that one. Uh, But with Scream, yes, you are going to get the same formula. But with I Know... 
you can if if you're clever, you can think outside the box a little bit, and it doesn't necessarily have to be someone dies, someone seeks revenge to kill you, know, because that's ultimately what I know what you did last summer is. It's a revenge story. It is, yeah. I mean, it really is. It's a revenge story. Um, you almost actually, if you really step back, you should actually be siding with the fishermen because what these kids did was really fucked up. It's true. You know, I mean, it really is. I mean, true. like you almost want these kids to get their, you know, it's what happened to them. True. So, it's absolutely you know? true. <laughs> so, that's right. That's right. But maybe, um, maybe bullying. Maybe, maybe something like with the Laura Barnes thing. But she, you know, like you know, how Laura Barnes dies in it. But yeah. you know, um, oh, there's and, lots of different uh, ways. You and and look, I mean, if the executives at Sony were really impressed and and like, wow, that's actually a really good idea, then maybe it is something that's that's that is a bit different now you know you know we have to be mindful as well that it that there's a good chance that it's going to be modern and current so uh you know the themes that surround the film um you know they're they're going to want to relate you know to to yeah. things that that are happening so if two characters happen to be gay in the movie shut the fuck up and just watch the movie okay <laughs> okay like who cares you know what i'm saying just because something or if there happens to be you know uh, I don't know. I like listen. Woke stuff does exist. There, there, there is stuff. I, it absolutely exists. It absolutely exists. But just because a character is gay, or you know what, it doesn't mean that the or there's a woman in it doesn't that doesn't mean it's woke. I'm just 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 I'm just putting that out there now because I can hear it now. You know. The, well, the, I can the, rest assure you, the killer's pro the killer's probably going to be a female. I can almost well that well that, that that actually but but that I don't mind that, that I right. don't mind because that I think I mean no matter what era you're in woke or not th that's cool that's cool and Correct. I've always I've always liked that because psychologically um, you know uh, or generally speaking you know killers are male and and Correct. so uh, when we go into a situation when when we are watching a scenario with a masked killer or a killer in the shadows and we don't know unless we know up front that it's a man we inst like i n have no doubt in my mind that if i was old enough to have watched friday the 13th uh, in the theater in 1980 but of course we were only 1 years old when it came out um that i would have thought the same thing that you would have yeah. you absolutely would have thought that was a man now does it help to that obviously some of the hands we see are also kind of manly sure but 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 absolutely and then all of a sudden oh my god it's a woman what the hell i'm actually i'm okay with that i sure look, i yeah I'm i don't okay care about the, the, the i don't care about the sexuality thing no, I, mean, no, I, no, I don't and i know really, you don't it, it, i know you it, don't. it don't matter to me who you who you knock in boots with you're, you're if you're exactly. a dude knocking and, boots with a dude that's cool if you're a girl knocking boots with a girl listen, that's cool if you're a girl listen. knocking boots with a girl and a dude that's cool too <laughs> listen <laughs> i just want to say i say that not i can for be you. the dude with right. the two girls but there you, you go know. i say that <laughs> not go. not for you i i say that because I think we have to take a step back a little bit because if we say everything is woke just because there happens to be, you know, a, a gay couple or, or th then, then it loses its meaning. You know, look, I, yes, there are things that, that are uh, shoehorned in, that are on the nose, that are pretentious and condescending and, and, you know, but if we just start to say everything is, then nothing is. And, and, and so it's important that, that we remember that out there. I, you know, it's, it's very you know, important. I am okay with, I have always been of the mindset, as long as everything is properly motivated. So from a story perspective, the actions and decisions that characters make or the reason for a character being a certain way, everything is properly motivated. Nothing is shoehorned in. Nothing feels right. pretentious or preachy. It's Everything makes sense from a story and character perspective. I don't care if it's a story about uh, the entire cast is gay. I don't care if everything is properly motivated and everything makes sense and it's creepy and it's 
it's scary and 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 yes, it, it, it doesn't feel shoehorned in. It's just a great horror film. Count me in. I don't care. I've I, I really don't. Um, so but I, I can hear it now. You know, I can hear it now. It's because I think a lot of people just like to glom on to buzzwords and and the 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 second they feel that something's a little off, they go, oh well that's clear, you know. And I, I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that because I I can hear it now. I can hear it now. But in, in terms of, of uh, the killer maybe being a female, that's interesting. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb here. How would you feel? And again, mm. at face value, this doesn't, like at face value. So thinking about it just as hearing, it, it's kind of like, oh, well, that's kind of weird. How would that, again, well, yeah, it sounds weird to hear at first, but that's because we don't know what the story is. We don't know, you know, again, as long as everything is properly motivated, all the decisions the characters make, it, it, it all makes sense. How would you feel about the killer being like Julie or Ray? If properly motive, uh, yeah, you know, if, if the motive is there, right. I, I wouldn't care. But um, I don't think they would do that to Julie. Ray, I don't know, man. I, like, what would be his motivation to well, do it? That's um, my point, right, is that everything has to make sense. I'm just saying that if it was a great story and at the very end you found out, it's like, holy shit. You know, it's like, what the fuck? I guess it's kind of hard. Maybe it's a question that's not worth asking right now because it's difficult because we know so little about what what the context of everything is. And I'm not suggesting they're going to do that. I'm just simply saying. I just I think I want the motive to be, you know, just again, I I, I don't I, I hate to recycle the idea of what they did originally. Um I, I'm hoping that they came up with something really clever here that whatever the motive is, be it a guy killer, girl killer, whatever it is, um, that it's a really good motive that you can get behind and the motive is believable enough for that's it. That's it. the individual to to go and want to hurt the, the kill these people. And again, I don't want to see it because it's revenge. You know, revenge. Mm. That, 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 I think that's one of my hard. So you want to see something the, different? Okay, talk to me. Talk I do to because me, Tony. Talk it's to well, me. Be, it because that my, if I had to say an issue with the first movie is that it really is a revenge story. That if you do step back and you watch it from the perspective of the fisherman, he's he, motherfucker. You tried to kill his kid. And you try to throw him off into the fucking ocean and get rid of his body. Like, yeah, if I was a father, that's exactly how I would fucking respond if someone did that shit to my kid. Um, right, right. I totally would seek revenge. So um, that's the one that that's the and it's the big plot of the movie. It's the it's the it's, it's the drive. Yeah, yeah, why yeah. it's it, it's a revenge movie and and it's more so than a horror film. And it's like honestly, at the end of the day, I wanted to see all the kids get killed because they deserved it. So. Right. Um, I hope with this, that whatever this girl, the director came up with, I hope she pitched a really cool idea. That's different. That gives you a, that, that gives the killer a proper, bleh, proper motive that maybe we don't know. Maybe it's like kind of Michael Myers is like, mm. we don't know fully why, you know, but you know what then I again, think? with a movie like this, you kind of have to, like, you, you, you have to connect the dots to like why this person's gone batshit crazy and do you know people? Do you know what I think would be cool? I think it'd be cool mm -hmm. if, because I don't know if Scream's going to do this. I have a feeling Scream's not going to do this, and it's too bad because, you know, uh, oh, what? I, turn I, Nev into Ghostface. No, Sydney, no, I mean, no, no, no. Taking no, no, no. I the one. Th okay, so you you first said this i'm not saying you're the only one that's thought of this but on this show you told me about this idea and i wholeheartedly agree with it and i've been preaching it like the gospel uh it's such a, a good again again pending that everything is properly motivated oh, everything makes sense. i know what you're gonna say you know what i'm gonna, I know say. What you're gonna say so yeah. uh i don't the, think the killer the killer lives yeah yeah i don't think scream's gonna do it because i don't think i just don't think they're gonna have the balls to do it i mean maybe I, in, oh in it would of, be perfect it's it never would, been done before you know it, but but how would you feel if if at, yeah at the end of this new i know what you did we don't know who the killer is. And that, so you leave it on a cliffhanger. And it's still leave it on a cliffhanger so that if you want to have a sequel, yeah. Right, so now, cool. the, so now you can carry it on. Like now it's the same killer. So now you don't have to figure out, okay, so what- Who I'm the not, killer is and why. Right, and so- Right. Is it an instance where we find out who the killer is at the end of the movie and then he, he, he or she is caught 
And then in the next one, if they do another one, that same person escapes or it's the kid. Like, I just, I don't know. I, I, I think of something that's really, think of a great idea that's really good, really compelling, lots of suspense. It's a slasher film. So get the blood in there. I know all you slasher nuts need that. So get the blood in there. Get the, get all that in there. And, and yeah, maybe, maybe there's a shocking ending. Like, like shocking, like, like Ray dies, you know, or something where it's like, what the fuck, you know, but the movie would have well, to be. Because I mean, if it's like, if it, if the killer is connected to anything involving the original killer, right. Family line or something like that, then yeah. it's like, eh, you know, it, like it, if, if you go could, down that road, it's like, it's a, again, revenge. It's reve like, and, yeah. and now the killer is going after like their kids or something like that right. for and revenge. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Eh. See, the thing is, here's part of the problem too. Scream has a fan base that outshines. I know you did last summer by, you know, 5 trillion to one. I mean, I mean the, the, the scream IP and the scream, yeah, the Scream intellectual property is embedded into the pop culture zeitgeist. It's not just the horror zeitgeist. See, I look at it this way, and this is just me, but I look at it, there's, there's a horror zeitgeist and there is a pop culture zeitgeist. And sometimes horror films and horror characters, for whatever reason, there's a variety of reasons and there's a variety of things, there's a perfect storm that has to happen for this to happen. But often what will happen is horror characters or films will become very popular and embed themselves into the horror zeitgeist, right? The horror sort of, it's really popular within the horror community and, and it's, it's amazing. But crossing the threshold of the horror zeitgeist into mainstream pop culture is a different level. Freddy has done it. Jason has done it. Uh, Michael Myers has done it. Um, you know, uh, I had this, yeah, even though the care, even though the character has been played by multiple people, the character of Ghostface is definitely the, the last icon, last iconic character that we've seen in the horror genre, as far as a fresh face and a new idea, sure. because that mask well, that, that's, that's sitting back there, people know what that mask is. I, they I, see I, it like, Oh, it's scream. Yeah. I was just going to say that the character of Ghostface has also done that. It's not just a horror icon it is a i mean it's always related to horror but it has crossed that mm. threshold into the pop culture zeitgeist and yeah. uh even few, more so than art the clown and art the clown oh, had a nice little run here well, but but art the clown it, is also ghost face is on like a, a, a it, it's on another level he's on the level of the michael jason 100%. Freddy, and so Chucky, I, you know all those characters that came out in Chucky's the 70s another and 80s. one so i did a video about art the clown a few months back before terrifier 2 came out and i was talking about that exact thing i wasn't bashing the movie or anything i hadn't seen the movie i'm not bashing the filmmakers i'm talking about it as objectively you know as possible i'm you know giving a verbal think piece on 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 sort of the the you know the the how characters relate to pop culture and all that kind of jazz and sure. there's no doubt that art the clown has become extraordinarily popular in the horror community and he's immediately recognizable and he is absolutely a modern day horror icon for sure and because of what terrifier 2 was able to do because they were able to get into theaters and howard stern was talking about it and some talk shows were talking about it that's knocking on the pop culture zeitgeist door right that's art's not quite yep. there yet because he's still too new um he's still new but if it continues that way, then he may or may not become, you know, past that threshold into the general pop culture sort of yeah. sphere. Well, because I think the key thing that like, and even like people in the chat room might be misunderstanding you on because they're throwing out other characters. Like Dave was saying, there's the horror zeitgeist and then there's the pop culture. When you mention a character in the horror community, most horror fans are gonna be like, yeah, I know who you're talking about. But if you mention certain characters just to the average Joe, if oh, who the if fuck I, are you, who are you talking about? If but I, if you show them the ghost face mask, they're like, oh, scream. They'll know what right. you're talking about. It's you know what always, I mean? It, Even, sorry, sorry, dude. 
Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. It was the delay. I thought you no. were done, and then I heard you. It's the the delay. No, I was going to say apologies. they like they know when you see the the hockey mask or the ghost face mask or the Michael Myers mask or Leatherface or Freddy. They know. I can mention those names to my father who doesn't watch horror movies. And he's like, I know what you're talking. He'll know at least enough to know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But when you're talking in the horror community, of course, the characters, some of these people are mentioning in the chat room. Yes. People are going to know, but in pop culture, no, it's people have no idea what we're talking and, about. And it all comes down to what we're measuring, right? What's the measuring stick. So I always look at it and this isn't an exact science. Of course, I haven't actually done this. I should do this. Cause I think this would make a really right. cool video for my channel. But I've often said, you know, like taking a bunch of things, going to Dundas Square in downtown Toronto, which is Toronto's Times Square, and going down there where there's lots of people and the LED billboards and the big signs and the hustle and the bustle and the honking and all that kind of stuff, and go down there and walk up to people and show them photographs. Now, I could show them a photograph of Pumpkinhead, and there'd be a lot of people that wouldn't know who the fuck that was. Right? Yeah. And I could show a lot you of You could people. show them Art the Clown and they I wouldn't know show who, them who Art it was. I could show, now, there, there, there absolutely would be people that would know who it was, for sure. Sure. But going up to the average person and showing them a photo, um, you know, of, let's say, the Myers house, the average person would not know who, what house that was. You know, the Myers house, because it was really only in one movie, right? I know it was in part two, and then it changed looks all the time. It never, right. that house specifically from Halloween one, never embedded itself into the pop culture zeitgeist. Whereas the Psycho house and the Amityville house have, for example, the Elm Street house is far more iconic than the original Myers house um, in terms of general pop culture. But anyway, I digress. So the point I'm making is because Scream, the intellectual process, property of Scream is in the pop culture. I know what you did last summer, not so much. Now there's a variety no. of reasons for it. It's primarily because it never spawned a, a franchise that became a cultural phenomenon. They had one movie, which was, you know, all right. You know, the first one was pretty good. And then they had a sequel, which right. wasn't if very good. If you showed people the guy, if you guys, if you showed people the, the slicker man, right. People are going to be like, who is that? The, uh, fucking, um, uh, what's the, um, what? what's the food what's the food there that's the guy the fisherman that's a food as as well like like the fish oh, stick uh, food Heinz? no no um, um uh not not heinz uh captain uh, highliner some shit like that whatever it is captain I don't, highliner? I, 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 they won't they, whatever whatever the, 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 they'll think they won't know it's from i know what you did last summer you know what I mean? No, no. And look, um, I mean, they'll, some, they'll, they'll think it's like some other character or some shit. No one's going to sure. know who you're, you're talking about. For sure. Now, some people will, but, but yeah, we're talking generally. And, and so it, it, it never did. Gordon's again. Fisherman. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yes. All right. Now there's, <laughs> That's it. but there's reasons, right? One movie, which was pretty good. Uh, a sequel, which wasn't very good. And then that was it until 2006. And then there was a direct to DVD, it never it never embedded itself. It, it's not nearly as popular, not nearly as beloved, not nearly as well known, right? Not nearly as cared about, right? So, so yes. So, um, you know, one of the reasons, again, going back to what I was originally talking about, see, I always bring it home. I always bring it home. Um, is one of the reasons why they may not want to do that in terms of ending on a, it, it depends how strong the story is. It depends how, whatever idea uh, Robinson and McKendrick have, whatever idea they have, it depends, I, I, I don't know what it is, it depends how strong it is, but ending on a cliffhanger might be too risky because not enough people care about what happens next or care about these characters. You have sure. to get these people to care. It's One not an IP like Scream where you not. know people that, are probably gonna want more, right? Right. and. And the thing is too, because it's been so long, you have to reintroduce, you have to get people to care about it again. With Scream right. uh, 5 came out, people were waiting. They were in line waiting, chomping on the bits. <laughs> They're just waiting. Nobody's yeah. waiting for this. I mean, yes, there's people no. our age who are excited because we were 18 going to see cute girls, you know, in the movie theater in 1997. But the vast majority of people don't care about this, right? So they hear yeah. this. I can't tell you how many people I've told have been like, Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, hey, screams. I mean, I mean, more 
there was more pop when it was announced that Scream 6 was being made than this, right? So you've got to get people to care about it again and to care about this universe again and to care about these characters again. So you really are, for all intents and purposes, you really are in some way starting from scratch. And right. that's- Which I think is the best idea rather than picking up from where, because like I said, the sequels are so forgettable. I didn't even watch it. No one's going to know like if they reference like, didn't they end up on an island or something? I Because I didn't watch it all the way yeah, through. Yeah, the sequel was, uh, yeah, it was like the son of the fisherman or something. And, and Some he, shit. Like that's what I'm saying. Like it's so forgettable that island. people are not going to know no, where it's- if you start fresh and clean you got a shot at something here really good, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So I think that's what they're going to do. I think this is going to be, it could be a situation where they call the movie I Know What You Did Last Summer or some variation of that. Uh, maybe they they might want to distance themselves a little bit from the failed Amazon show, uh, although I'm not yeah. sure. But then again, I Know What You Did Last Summer is the title of the original film. I think it could be a situation where the story acknowledges the events of the first movie and maybe there's something in the background on the shelf or something that tells you that I still know is also canon, but they don't really right, talk like about it. Like a photo or something with right. Brandy and um, right. exactly. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Exactly. Right? So that tells... Right viewers like us. It's there, but we're not going to talk about it. It's there, but we're not going to talk about it. We're only going to acknowledge the events of the first movie. I have a feeling it's probably going to be something like that. And then to the article's point, to your point, to my point we're talking about here today, I think they're going to usher in new faces and they're going to build a story around these new faces. And then of course, these new faces are going to be fishes out of water. They're not going to know what to do. Uh, Maybe Jennifer Love Hewitt, maybe it's, you know, it's college age kids and Hewitt is a professor and yeah, you know yeah. one of the girls go or guys uh goes to the prof- oh you know and because they know that she went through that or whatever or or maybe ray is a professor and and somehow they're going to be looped back into it and they're going to be there and they're going to be part of the ride but it is a definite passing of the torch kind of film like what they did with scream and i get it i get i totally get it i totally get yep. it um what the meat is of the story though i don't really know but yeah with a with a IP like I know what you did, especially coming off the failed Amazon, right? They have a a TV series that failed. So now you're even more behind the eight ball. So now you got to get people to care about this. And no doubt Jennifer Love Hewitt and 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 Freddie Prince are being used as as pawns in a good way. I mean, no, I, and they know that. Yeah. They know that. They They're know not that. stupid. They know, hey guys, we need you to come back so we can sell this. They know that. Of course they know that. Yeah. It's not stupid. Just pay me and I'll do it. <laughs> You know, yeah. so interesting stuff. Very interesting. It's going to be interesting. interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see where this goes, uh, to see how it continues to unfold, what the actual story will be, uh, who will be cast along with them. Um, but I'm very curious and I'm very happy to see what's her name again? Jennifer Caitlin Robinson. Again, I, I don't know who she is. I don't know. I, I haven't seen her work, but she's a new up and coming filmmaker. And I'm just excited for her to have this opportunity. I, I think that's awesome. I'd be, I would be very happy if I was given an opportunity like that. I'd be like, yeah, let's, let's go do it. You know what I mean? So I think yeah. that's cool. That's cool. And not to sound woke, I'm just saying, but it is cool that it's a female director because there are a lack of them in horror. So it is cool to see that. That's awesome. Cool. So Absolutely. Like, we'll see how it goes. Awesome shit. So I'm pulling for it, man. I'm pulling for it. I, I hope that it's, uh, I hope that it's good. I hope that it's good. Yeah. Um, any last things you, you're you kind of worried about, excited about before we jump no, over to the Q&A? N- nothing really. Um, like, I mean, there's, there's obviously not enough information. There's no trailer. So we got no texture to work off of right now. I think once That's we it. get an idea, I think once we see that first trailer, uh, you know, then we'll maybe we'll come back and talk about it a little bit more. Maybe, you know, talk about the trailer, talk about, you know, do a follow up video and talk, For sure. you know, talk some more about it and whatnot. And, uh, you know, because right now we're just getting a little blip, you know, and we're, we're it's speculation and uh, got to get a little bit more meat on the, uh, the uh, on the on the plate there. We just got kind of the potatoes right now. That's it. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We need just a little more to kind of extend this conversation beyond sort of where, yeah. sort of where we are. But uh, you know, yeah, me, it's can... not, you know, it's not like, it's not like Halloween 
where th- there's a lot that you can, you know, when someone announces they're doing a Halloween film, well, there's a lot there that you can, or Friday the 13th, you know, we can go all day, you yes. know, and talk about different, you know, things and nightmare, same way with, I know there's just not, not enough there. And the fact that you and I, like, I haven't seen the second movie in its entirety. No. I haven't watched the third movie. I didn't even know there was a TV show until you talked about it tonight. Um, so there's, you know, there's not enough there to that. I think to have a conversation about um, because it's just that one of those kind of forgettable franchises that sort of like fell under the radar and then just dropped off, you know, and now might, might have an opportunity to be resurrected, but not just resurrected, shock people and go well fuck that was really good that's it you know and that's what i'm that's what i'm pulling for is a well fuck that was really good yeah and to to your point right exactly what you just said is is what i was trying to say earlier which is it's not it's not as look we know of especially if you're our age you know about it because it was a hot commodity at that time but it's not scream it's not halloween it's not elm street it's not friday it doesn't have the mythology it doesn't have the history it doesn't have the universe to 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 talk about it beyond what we have here today although you know i could extend i can i can keep things going for a while but uh but you're you're bang on. You're bang, and that was my point. Yeah. Where it's almost like you're starting from scratch. You have to reintroduce. You have to get people to care about this universe again, especially when you only got one movie that people even consider good. I mean, at right. least with Scream. I mean, I know some people are not really crazy on the third one, but beyond that. You know, everybody, I mean, Scream has yet to have their Resurrection or Halloween 5, right? They haven't had that right. yet. Now, maybe 6 will be it. I don't know. But I know what you did essentially had it with, like, I still know. Yeah, this one, got- this one coming out next month, it's either going to be, uh, it, there's. I, I think there's only two ways you can go. It's either going to be phenomenal or it's going to fucking blow. It's going to be interesting. It's it, going to be yeah. interesting. <laughs> one it's or the other. Interesting. There's no, I don't think there's a real happy medium with, Ghostface takes Manhattan. It's either great or sucks. It's true. That's it's it. true. <laughs> it's true. Anyways, folks, uh, jump into the comment yeah. section below if, if you're watching after the fact and let Tony and I know your thoughts on the I Know You Did Last Summer sequel in development. Oh, and by the way, I should have said this at the very top uh, of the show, but also remember that when a film is in development, that doesn't necessarily mean it's definitely going to happen. Okay, now do I think yeah. this is is going to happen? Yes, I think there's a high probability it will because the pitch yeah. went very well. Freddie and and Jennifer are wanting to come back and yes, there's a high probability it will, but always remember that when a film is in development, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going there are far more movies that 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 sit and live in development that th- th- than films that see the light of day. So when a film is in development, it doesn't mean it's been greenlit yet. Those are two different stages. Um, it is in it's development. True. They're working on the script. They're trying to get things together, trying to get organized and then hopefully then they, it will move into pre-production. Uh, so there's always a chance, highly unlikely because of kind of how well things are going so far, but there's always a chance that somewhere down the road we could hear in Deadline or some, oh, it's not happening now because, the, you know, blah, blah, blah. You never know. You never know. Just want to say that. Yeah. Just want to say that. Uh, but yeah, jump into the comment section below and let Tony and I know your thoughts on I Know What You Did Last, the sequel in development to I Know What You Did Last Summer with Freddie Prince Jr. and Jennifer Love Hewitt. Jump down there. Tell us your thoughts. Tell us your theories. What do you think? What do you hate? Everything. Just start the start the discussion down there below and let us know. Let's jump over to the chat room now and see what all you find, my crazies. And uh, uh, I do want to uh, piggyback off something that was asked in the chat shoot. room, and I couldn't chime in. Shoot. Uh, but I think I think Evil Alex asked, and then everybody was commenting about mm. what I thought about um, seeing my boy Michael Keaton back as uh, Batman oh, in the Flash yeah. trailer, dude. Dude, the, like the 10 year old in me, the 10 year old was fucking mm-hmm. screaming. Like, I just like nostalgia, but like Batman 89, man. Like, if you were around at that time, and Dave can attest to it, like, you don't know, like, it was 
monstrous. It was like huge. Yeah, and, and I'm not talking like the, the the bad PR before that that Keaton was getting all the shit like Michael Keaton Batman all this stuff. But when the movie came out and just the phenomenon that it was that year, um, and what that movie was for my childhood. I mean, he is my Batman. He's my definitive Batman. He will always be my definitive Batman. So when I saw that and you heard a little bit of the music, I was like, mother. Fucker. I don't know about the whole movie. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know like what surrounding all of it, but I will say this, what I'm hoping that may happen from this. I don't know how I'm going to feel about the flash movie in itself, but I'm hoping that maybe him and Burton might just say, you know what? Let's do one more. You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's do, maybe this you- might pull them together to say, Hey, let's maybe do the trilogy and, and call it a day. It would be interesting Maybe. to see if how well you got to get past Warner Brothers and James Gunn and all that because obviously now they're running I get the that. show. So, but they but, they do have these one offs that they're they doing do? like these Elseworld the Elseworlds. Yes, they do. You know, like the the Joker is an Elseworld. Yep. The Robert Pattinson Batman's an very Elseworld. True. Very um, true. So yep. it's very possible that they might just say, "Hey, you know what?" Because of Keaton's age. They might just maybe they know. might do Batman be Batman Beyond is an idea yep. that people have tossed out there. But I I that's what I'm hoping mm. that it might do. That it might that that it might trigger something maybe with Burton will. to say, hey, you know what? Let's well, do it. Let, let's let's do a trilogy and call maybe, it. Maybe maybe it will because I hear rumblings about a Spider Man four. So I'm just I'm just saying, you never know. You, you never know. You never know. What did you think when you saw when you saw oh, I thought it? It was I mean, great. I, know, like, I thought now I don't yeah. have I mean, I, I don't have like I like Keaton as Batman and I saw it and I, and, but it's not, it, it, it doesn't affect me to the same degree as it does others, sure. but I can, but I thought it was really cool and I smiled and I knew he was going to say it. And I'm like, just say it. Cause if he doesn't say it, that's a fucking missed opportunity. I know, that's right? I was, like, I was like, pause, I'm pause. I'm like, I'm like you're going to say it, motherfucker. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can think I'm about, Batman. <laughs> yeah, like, but I can think about other things in my life where I have that same kind of thing, right? You know, whether it's like sure. Indiana Jones or something horror related, you know, whatever. And so I, I get it. Like, I totally get why people were losing their minds over it. I get it. I, I get the, I'm Batman. I totally get it. It's in pop culture. I get it. Uh, and I thought it was great. I, I actually, as somebody who has no dog in this fight and who, who and who's only seen like, you know, three DC films, part of the DC and like three MCU films, I have no dog in the fight. I thought the trailer was fantastic. It looked like a fucking fun. It just looked fun to me. It, sure. it kind of reminded the me the multi-worlds I, yeah. and verse and all that stuff. It yeah. just looked it, it reminded me like I went and saw Shazam in the theater. I had no idea who Shazam was. I have no context to how it relates to the universe. I don't I have no idea. To me, it just looked like, hey, big meet Superman. That looks like a lot of fun. Let's go see that. And I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I thought it was a fun movie, you know? So I'm watching it on a very average general movie going audience level. And I felt the same way when I saw the flash trailer, I don't understand all the nitty gritty shit that, that, uh, the hardcore fans will, of course I recognize right. Keaton as Batman and I understand it's a multi-universe thing. I get that of course, but in terms of all like the nitty gritty story, all the deep, you know, the high stakes and what it all means and what's actually happening. And well, you see, there's two of them here because he did this and you gotta, get, I, I, I don't understand any of that but to me i looked at the trailer and i thought that's a good fucking trailer it's a very yeah. good trailer and it made me excited to see it so you know if it made me excited to see it then it really did its job you, you know what i mean the, I'm, I'm telling you I, I, I the only reason that i will even and i'm not big into going to the movies and, and seeing the only reason is because of keaton being in there for Batman. So, right. and I don't expect him to get him. I don't expect him to be on there a lot. I, I know this is a flash movie. I yeah, get yeah. it. Um, So I know what I'm going in to see already. It's probably going to be a lot like Spider-Man and, you know, how they brought in um Andrew Garfield and yeah. Tobey Maguire uh, and whatnot, you know, maybe towards more the second and the third, you know, act. That's probably where I expect Keaton to show up. Right. Uh, and, the, and, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing all, you know, because everyone's going to do it. And it's going to be the reaction videos of people recording in the theater and everyone's of reacting course, seeing Michael Keaton course. for the first time no, no, you know no. here's how it's going to go Tony here's how it's going to go this is exactly what's going to happen you can fucking clip this somebody clip this and put it up online yeah, someone like, clip this moment because this, this is probably going to happen this is exactly right. what's going to happen so the film's going to come out you're going to get all the cell phone footage from the theaters and then as soon as you see Keaton come on screen right everyone in the theater is going to go ah! 
They're going to lose their shit. And then, and then, as the camera is pushing in on Keaton, right, you're going to hear people going, ah, squash. He's going to say it. Squash. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> because they want to hear him say it. And everybody's right. going to be losing their minds. And then, shh. And then, shh. I'm Batman. And then he says it. Yeah. <laughs> but then some theaters. That's literally going to happen. That happen. is literally going to happen. And then some yes. theaters, though, some theaters, people won't shut up and they're going to miss it. Like, it, it, like it'll die down a little bit. It'll simmer a little bit from all the shh. But then somebody, but people are still going to be carrying over their energy from, oh my God, they can't believe it's Keaton on screen. And they're, and then it's, and then I'm Batman. It's going to be. Well, dude, the it, last it, time we totally seen him was what? Nine, it's going to be drowned out. Was it 91 92, when Batman Returns 92, came out? Or 92. 92. So it's 92. Been, tw- been 30 years since we've seen him as Batman. Yeah. I got to tell you. Damn, has it been that long? I got to tell you. It's 30 years. We're getting old. As much as it, maybe it's an American thing because I, I don't know. But I got to tell you. I get it. I understand it. I'm going to say this is going to piss a lot of people off, but shut oh the boy. fuck up. Just shut up, okay? I want to hear the movie. I don't want to hear you. Ah, ah, you're not in your living room, okay? Just shut up. Now, maybe it's a generational thing. I'm an old, you know, I'm, you know, you know, we're nearly 44. I don't know. But I'm just like, shut up. Like, like oh, God. I get, you know, because you can't hear anything. And you and you know, as much as some theaters are going to, yeah, there are going to be some theaters where people are going to calm down fast enough to hear that I'm Batman. But you know there's going to be a lot of theaters that aren't. There's going to be too many people that are just too high energy. They're too energized. And then it's going to get to the moment. And instead of hearing, I'm Batman, all you're going to hear is, <laughs> because there's too much. Ah, 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 and the people are going to go, oh, fuck, I missed it. Oh, I missed it. I want to. Ah. It's all that fucking. No. It's like, shut up. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. I'm there to hear yeah, the movie, uh, not you. Yeah. I don't think geek out. I don't think Pfeiffer is going to make an appearance as Catwoman in this. The only way I would see her showing up again as Catwoman is if Tim Burton does a third film with Michael Keaton. Um, that's where I think you possibly could bring her in. Um, and she looks so she looks phenomenal. She could totally do it today. Yeah. Um, you know, absolutely. So I think I don't think in this. No movie because it's really focused on Flash and yeah. the multiverses, and I don't know shit about that, so I don't get me in. And don't ask way, me any questions because I, I don't go that deep with this. Um, and, so and I don't even know what Flash's goal is to do through all this and why he's going into the multi worlds and why he no, ends up in Keaton's no. world and all that stuff. But yeah, I just don't see. I don't think you're going to see Michelle Pfeiffer. The only way that happens is. If Tim Burton does a third film with mm. Keaton and maybe he they decide to bring her back as one of the characters. And by the way, I want to say I'm not against cheering and having fun in a theater when something really awesome or cool happens. But sometimes sure. those cheers and ah, it go on for like five minutes and I, I can't hear the fucking movie. I just shut up. Just shut up. You know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. anyway, although I'm glad people are having fun. Uh, okay. One other thing before I get to the super chats uh, or to the questions as well, I should say is um, I just want to remind people who may not know this Saturday and Sunday, I am holding a voiceover workshop over Zoom. Three hours on Saturday, 1 to 4 p.m. Three hours on Sunday, 1 to 4 p.m. This is a discounted rate I would not offer anywhere else. Massively discounted. 125 USD for both days together. Six hours with me professional voiceover workshop, perfect for the voiceover beginner. Or if you're somebody that's always wanted to know about that side of the entertainment industry, the first day we're going to be talking about agents and demos and animation, narration, commercial, movie trailers, network promos, you name it. We're going to be talking about it. And then on the second day, I'm going to have some scripts for you and we're going to be trying some things out. I'm going to get you to read some scripts. I'll offer some thoughts, some direction, just really fun. There you, you know, go. A lot of you have ask him all these questions during they, the show now's, your, chan- now's your chance to do it and, and learn it and, and get in and that's why I'm doing it. It's an introductory voiceover workshop. There's a maximum of like 10 to 12 spots because it's Zoom. I don't want fucking, I don't want to, you know, it's going to be way. So 10 to 12 right now, we still have some spots available. So if you're interested, this Saturday and Sunday, 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, both days, uh, 125 bucks. That is 
massively discounted. Uh, if this yeah. was out in the, well, I won't tell you what it would be out in the real world, but let's just say it's a good deal. If I do say so myself. So if you're interested um, and you, and you're on social media. Oh, are you kidding me? Back in the day when I was younger, like this is like in my, well, this is, almost 20 years now, whenever I would pay for a photography workshop, you, you could pay for a two day workshop and it could cost you between, and this is back in the day now, between mm. 500, for $600 sure. for, for a two day photography for sure. workshop. And, you and know? look, and, and, and I understand that. I and that's when we had to, we had to for, physically go there. For, you know? Yes, exactly. Yes. So this would be over zoom. Obviously uh, I will send everybody the zoom link Friday night, and then I'll see you all there uh, Saturday at 1 PM or shortly there before. Um, but yeah, it's a, I just wanted to do it. I wanted to do it for my viewers who, 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 who ask about it, who might be interested. Um, you know, uh, again, if you don't want to participate on the second day in reading scripts, cause maybe you're a little shy or you're just kind of nervous. Whatever, I understand that you don't have to, you, you don't have to, but it is encouraged. Uh, that is the whole point, right? Uh, is to learn about things on the first day and then apply them on the second day. Um, but I thought I would do that. And, and I thought I would give a, heavily discounted rate to my viewers because you guys are my viewers. Uh, I would not be doing this uh, elsewhere in the real world in the entertainment business, I can tell you that. Um, so yes, if you're on social media, uh, head to my Facebook link in the description. Okay, many things Dave McRae. Send me a message there and just say, hey, I'm interested. Uh, how do I sign up? And I will get back to you after the show and let you know. If you don't have you social go. media, send an email to me at thevoiceman at gmail.com. Now, man has two N's. So it's T H E V O I C E M A N N, the voice man with two N's at gmail.com. Send me an email there if you don't have social media and we'll get you signed up. Just wanted to put that out there and let you guys know. Um, yeah. Okay. Now let's. Uh, Although I, uh, I do want to just yeah, yeah, yeah. piggyback off a comment here that um, someone, Warren uh, Armour, said to enjoy the movie theaters. They will be extinct soon, real soon, like skating rinks. No one remembers skating rinks. Uh, now, this could be a locational thing um, it, where it could be different across the country, across the world. But here in this area in the South, roller skating rinks are fucking huge. It's a big deal. Like skating, like. I don't know how, how, what they call it. Um, as far as like these types of skaters who are in sync with each other, doing similar moves and stuff, but they're packed and DJs like myself, you're fighting to get a spot on a Friday, Saturday or Sunday at one of these places. Cause yeah. Usher, the, the R and B singer, he's always out there out on the rink doing crazy shit and whatnot. Like a lot of big celebrities around who live in the Southern parts of the region because sk roller skating here anyways, it is a, it is a, it's a it's a it's part of the pop culture of Atlanta in the South. Now maybe around other places it may be a dying thing where you don't see it that often. So I I think it could be a locational thing. Like maybe up where Dave lives, ice skating might be more the thing versus to roller skating because they get cooler weather than we do. Um, we don't have ice skating rinks down here because I mean it's fucking a billion degrees all year round. Mm -hmm. uh, but skating rinks down here, uh, they're definitely not they, skating. They're, they're big business. They're big like skating, roller skating. rinks means something different down there than it does up here <laughs> it is it's, it really yeah, does yeah, yeah, dude yeah, yeah. it's 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 amazing yeah. to see these people yeah. and like i said like djs are like when i was working for the radio station back in the day like i was literally fighting other djs from other stations to get a spot at one of these places because you knew you could stand a chance one of getting discovered and getting your name out there because you knew that these were hot spots that people within like the age group of say like 16 to like 45 50 years old are hanging out at on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and they're large fucking crowds and good crowds too. They're not nothing bad, nothing stupid or anything like that. But I, I'll send you after the show, Dave. I'll send you a link to some of this shit. It's bonkers the, the, the way these people are in sync with each other and the moves that they're doing and stuff. And oh yeah, like it's it, it's I I because I remember when I first came to Georgia in the early two thousands and trying to get my name out there, someone told me that like, dude, you got to get into the skating rink stuff. And I'm like, what? Like, I just like, like, what are you fucking talking about? Like, like who would want to do that? Like, I felt like that would be such a demeaning low like thing as a DJ to do until I showed up there and saw it and, and, and like witnessed the culture behind it. I was like, okay, then like this shit is fucking on a different level. And mm -hmm. so that's why I think 
but it'd be a regional thing that could be. where it's popular here, but maybe not in other places. It could be. It could be. Uh, and also to uh, somebody, Evil Alex says, uh, uh, Dave, have you ever done any teaching before? I have. Um, I have taught voiceover workshops in the past. Uh, Sebastian says, wait, can anyone join? I didn't pay attention. Yes, Sebastian, anyone can join. Now there's a limit, okay? I want to limit it to like 10 to 12 participants because obviously I can't have like, you know, a hundred people or that would just be, it's not manageable. Um, now that does, now if it's successful, then I will do it again in the future. Uh, but we, we still have a few spots open. Uh, but yes, anyone can join. And it's, it's a total beginner introductory workshop into the world of professional voiceover. Uh, and Evil Alex says, over what platform? I think you're talking to me. Uh, Zoom. It's over Zoom. So uh, Zoom is free to download. If you don't have it, you can download it for free and you can use it for free. And I will send you the Zoom link on, uh, on Friday night. I will send everybody the Zoom, the same Zoom link Friday night. So we'll tee up with each other uh, the next day. And again, that's Saturday, Sunday, 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Send me a, a, shit. a DM to my Facebook page in the description below. Um, all right. So some of the super chats that came in. Let me see if we can get these here so we don't forget. Um, bum, bum, bum. Eh, let's forget about them. Yeah, fuck it. Forget it. Forget about it. <laughs> Arthur Vega sends in a very generous super chat of $20. Thank you, Arthur, and says, Hey, Dave and Tony, just wanted to say, I hope you guys uh, would make your Halloween 1950, 1950s noir film a reality. Sounds awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool, man. Be, It'd take a lot of fun. money, though. I, I, that's a, that's a, yeah, you'd, you'd need, um, Take a lot of work and a lot of that, money, that, but it would be cool. That's a high budget project because when you're talking about a, a specific era, you're talking about the 50s. So yeah, it's a period um, piece. Now, certainly, now certainly, there's a lot of places down here in the south that I have photographed that have a bit of that 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 could work for locations. Uh, but you're still you, you're talking costumes. You're talking if you're going to do any interior shots in a home, you've got to have the home look like it's the 1950s, and that, that's that's it's a, a period piece. That, that's a big. It's a it's a big budget. It's yeah. a big budget. That yeah. that's a big budget fan film. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, for that, sure. That's in the like that's a that's in the probably easily if we if and this isn't kidding you. If, if Dave and I seriously wanted to do it and we wanted to do it right, you're talking a couple million. Oh, for easily sure. Easily to do that. To, yeah, to, to I mean, do that. And that's not just saying it just like, oh, we're throwing out. No, I mean well, and because I, we're shooting it in black and white, you're shooting it as a period piece to look like 1950s Americana. A lot of fucking work. It's a lot of work. Yep, absolutely. And, and, you know, I, I've said that it, um, it's me, Billy chapter two will be the last fan film that, that, that I do in terms of that I create um, because I want to go off and do original work. But if I was ever part of another team, you know, there's, I, yeah, I mean, there, there's an expectation, right? You know, you want it to, right. it's, it's got a, the quality. I mean, I, you know, we've delivered and we're hoping to do the same. If we can get a chance to do part two here, we got to raise, you know, the funds first to deliver the same professional quality. And so anything I do after this, I, I can't now go back, <laughs> you know, it's got to be, it's got to be the same or even more. So, uh, and you're, you're right. I mean, it becomes a period piece, the, everything from, the, you know, the wardrobe to the set dressing to the props to the cars to the everything it's a it's a big it's a big a big production yeah um in terms of you know fan films i mean obviously it would still be a low budget shoot in the big world but yeah you're right it'd probably be like a five five or ten million dollar shoot if, Somewhere if you wanted there. to like do it, it right. do it right do it right right yeah exactly yeah you can do a um, shitty job and say it's a period piece, but everything looks like it's 2023. I, I love when people <laughs> say to me, um, and I'm sure that, you know, you get this in the photography world. Yeah. What it cost you? How much to make that? Well, I could make a feature for 5,000. Yeah. And it looks like a feature that was shot for 5,000. For 5,000. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean you, know, you can yes, do it. No one says you can't, no but you can't, it's going to look like a $5,000 know, budget. That's yeah. it. Uh, Drew Gold sends in a dollar ninety nine and says, "Love the paranormal vids reoccurring series, yes. please." Yes, we'll be doing some more for sure, Drew. Absolutely, thanks, buddy. And yeah, that's becoming a, a favorite of ours to do as well too. They're fun, even though you know we debunk a lot of them, but they're just they're fun. They're fun they're to fun. watch. No, they're know. just fun. Absolutely. They're, yeah. Um, Antonis Andriota sends in nine ninety nine. Thank you, Antonis. And says, uh, hey, Dave and Tony, how was your Valentine's Day? It's not one of my favorite holidays by any means, but I still enjoy it. Does Valentine's Day exist in Canada, Dave? It absolutely does. February 14th, every year. Uh, my Valentine's Day was pretty good. How about yours, Tony? 
It was good. Could have been better, but it was good. Oh, right, right. Yes. That. Yeah, true. Fair enough. So we'll, uh, leave, it, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Hmm. And Tonus Andriotis follows up with four ninety nine dollars and says, when do you guys think we will get the first The Exorcist 2023 trailer? If it's, mm. if it's coming out in October, if Danny McBride writes it, it will be bad. No, not necessarily. Um, okay, October. I think you're going to get it probably sometime, you know, in the mm. uh, spring, summer. You know, yeah. we said there. this no um, when we talked about it a few weeks ago. I'm actually look putting aside the Halloween trilogy. There's the things that I saw within the filmmaking of David Gordon Green. I actually almost feel like The Exorcist should have been his first project versus to tackling such a franchise like Halloween. Halloween is, and we said this during the show stream as i knock my headphones off here um halloween has become like star wars with the fan base there's a lot of toxicity in there um you you gotta you you literally have almost no room for error or you're going to be criticized to death on, on, on those movies you know what i mean and it's in it's almost an impossible task to do um that's why if i was a filmmaker as much as i love the Halloween franchise, I don't even know if I would ever want to tackle it because look, at the end of the day, we're all human beings. You know what I mean? Like you don't think some of the stuff that, unless he really disciplined himself to not read the internet comments, um, you don't think that shit affects you, you know, like, cause I mean, you still, you know, you're human at the end of the day. Um, he took a risk. It didn't pay it off. It didn't pay off, uh, on some of the stuff that he did. Having said that he's, he's got some creative, filmmaking you know that clearly is there that the exorcist actually might be the better ip for him and i'm pulling for him i'm rooting for him to succeed now if he fucks it up again then i'm gonna be like all right bro you just suck and you need to get out of fucking making movies you know what i mean because there does come a point where it's just like you can excuse you can you and, and i'm giving david gordon green a pass here because again the the almost unrealistic expectations that the fan base of halloween has you're never going to hit you know, yeah. everybody agreeing on all cylinders. So the exorcist may work out for him, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, if, if, if he, if he tanks it, then you, then you got to step back and go, maybe it's, it, it is you bro. And maybe it's time to find a new career. <laughs> and, and then that, that's a reality. No, that's, I'm not saying like, dude, I'm just saying like, that's a reality. Like you can give someone a pass. So, so only so many times before you start to go, maybe this is, isn't just, isn't your thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, so look, we'll I mean, I, 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 um, uh, yeah, I think the, the, the trailer will, su- will be probably in the summer. Um, I don't know what attached to or, or when, uh, who's doing it. Is it, it's Blumhouse Universal's probably distributed. Yeah, David, David, I, David Gordon Green. Right? I probably could find out. Not now. I think it's still too early to know now, but I, I probably could find out. Um, but I think it's going to be like, yeah, summer, maybe something like that. Um, I'm, you know, I'm looking, I, I think you are right. I think because of the stuff, I just hope because The Exorcist, really, it's more of a drama. It's a, it's a, yes, it's got horror elements Correct. to it, but it's really about, you know, um, you know, it's, it's drama, it's, suspense. It's you really, know. Right. it really, it, it's more, I'm not going to say it's completely, but when we're comparing Halloween and The Exorcist, when you just compare those two IPs, The Exorcist, thinking about the first movie now, is more character driven than plot driven. Whereas Halloween's Correct. more plot driven than character driven, so so I I think I think maybe uh, it might be a better fit for David Gordon Green. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. With the character driven of what he did with the Corey character in mm-hmm. Halloween ends, as much as I fucking hate the concept of it in a Halloween movie, especially the bookend of a trilogy involving Michael Myers. The character driven that he told story he told in that mm. is really good. Mm-hmm. So maybe you're right. The character, like you said, the exorcist is more character driven. He might actually fucking land the, land the plane on this one. He might. So It'll we'll be, int- it's going to be interesting to see. Josh McKenna sends in nine ninety nine. Thank you, Josh. And says, uh, you did the voice of Billy when Victoria, AKA Sam was on the phone, right? Correct. Uh, also, uh, did you and Bruce tell the actor who played Billy to have long hair, or was that his choice as an actor? No. Uh, the actor who played Billy was is uh, Brian Charles Peter, and he that's his natural hair, and he had that hair when he auditioned. 
Brian actually, uh, and he knows this, so it's not, you know, a secret or anything, but he wasn't our first choice in terms of, um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say he wasn't our first choice because we didn't see him till after we didn't even know he existed. So that's actually not a fair statement to make. We had, uh, held auditions, Brian, um, uh, we had, uh, received, um, auditions and we casted based on those auditions. One of those auditions. So Brian was not a part of that. We didn't even know about him. And then the actor we had actually hired um, was being uh, maybe a bit high maintenance, perhaps. Although I understood, I did un understand some of the requests he had. Uh, we just felt that at the end of the day, I, we, we didn't think it was going to be a, a fit. So we didn't have a Billy. And this is maybe the end of August, beginning of September. And we're planning to go to camera at the end of November. And we had everybody cast, but Billy. So we went out on the hunt again and, and, uh, um, went and, uh, put out, uh, an audition, uh, again. And then Brian Charles Peter came along. So as you can see, it's, it, it, it doesn't really line up to say that he wasn't our first choice because he wasn't a choice to begin with. Um, and Brian Charles Peter submitted and his son, who is a cinematographer and director had shot the the sides that we included with the audition and sides are just a portion of of uh, of the script that that you want the actor to audition. Um, his son, being a DP and a filmmaker, uh, shot his dad in dimly lit lighting with like moonlight coming in from the window. Um, I don't think it was real moonlight. It was it was um, I think he had a uh, a practical outside or, uh, had like, uh, like, a maybe like a, I don't know, like a small, you know, some sort of, I don't know if it was a, a sky panel or, or something outside to emulate the moonlight. And, um, and he's sitting in this chair and he's rocking back and forth. It was so well shot. Like it looked like something out of like a TV show and it, it worked because I'm looking at, it, I'm like, damn, look at that hair and the way his silver hair glistened in the light, the moonlight, right? You know what I mean? And he's sitting there and he's rocking back and forth. Now, of course, I could see his face and I knew that we were not going to see his face in the movie. Um, and then he was walking down this hallway, the shadowy figure. His son did an amazing job. It was like, a, it was, it was far too professional. And I was like, this is did he shoot this? Did who? This is really good. Um, so I asked him, and he's like, "No, no, you know, my son is a you know filmmaker, and he was helping me." And I was like, "Oh, well, tell your son, you know, he did a great job." So we had a Zoom call with him because we just loved the way he looked and the way he did his you know audition, and uh, 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 we were sort of telling him about the project and all that kind of stuff. And at the end, he goes, "Guys, guys, so." Do I have it or not? You know, and we're like, yes, yes, Brian, you've got it. You've got it. So uh, that's how it came to be. But that's his natural hair. That's his, yeah, no, he 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 already had that hair. Uh, and he's a sweetheart of a man and, and just a really cool dude. And he is returning to the, um, uh, to play Billy again in It's Me, Billy, chapter two. So, yeah. Um, and then the uh, Big Game Show sends in $5 and says, uh, hey, I just watched your film. It's me, Billy, for the first time. It was very... It it was very close, but no cigar. Still, it was nice. I want to see part two. Well, that's okay, big game show. It's art. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. It, it was close, but no cigar. Well, I don't know what you mean by close and no cigar, right? So obviously you had an expectation. So you were expecting it to be a certain way and it wasn't a certain way for you. And that's okay. That's okay, right? That's okay. Um, uh, it's that's that's the way the cookie crumbles. Do you know what I mean? Um, so without without knowing what cigar you were expecting, it's difficult for me to respond to it uh, and sort of maybe give you a bit of a different perspective on maybe the film. So I don't know sort of now I'm not saying you're like this, but there are some people that watch the film uh, expecting it to be a slasher movie. And so some people have been like, ah, there was enough blood or there was enough death. And my answer to that would be, well, you have to keep in mind that this is ba this is a direct sequel to the original Black Christmas from 74. So 
we wanted to create a film that was all about that that was more driven by mood and atmosphere and suspense and tension and drama rather than blood guts and gore so there's not a lot of action it's it's more character driven than plot driven although the second half does get more plot um so again, I'm not saying those are the issues you had with it. I don't know. I don't know what cigar you wanted. Um, but I do know that for some people, they were, I guess they were expecting something else. Uh, we're not doing a sequel to the 2006 film. We're doing a sequel to the original, which is much more psychological thriller. Um, now, chapter two, of course, uh, picks up immediately where chapter one left off and we dive right into it. So chapter two is a much darker, more intense chapter. And you've also only seen the first part, right? So keep that in mind as well. You've only seen the first part of a two-part story, and it was always designed to be that way. So if it feels unfinished, if it feels kind of like, ah, this feels incomplete, that's because it is. And it was designed to be that way. We we wanted to show you the first part, and if everybody really liked it, or enough people did, then hopefully we can raise the money again to finish the story. And we're really excited to do that, because now we get to show everybody the arc, and Sam's arc, and things get darker and more intense now and Sam has to fight back because she's trapped with her grandmother in the basement what are they going to do right Sam is alone her grandmother's alone they have to rely on each other to find that inner strength Sam has to find that inner strength that Emma told her she had in the first part and she's got to tap into that to be able to save herself and her grandmother and fight back against the clutches of Christmas evil which of course is Billy and Agnes so uh so keep that in mind as well keep that in mind as well. So, uh, but yeah, but without, without it, it's, uh, it's hard for me to say. Now you did follow up here and say big game show says, yes, part two should have more gore and blood, please. Uh, okay. So, uh, without giving spoilers away, I will say that it is more intense and that there is blood. Um, but it's not a blood guts and gore film. So, uh, you have to keep that in mind, right? I don't know if you are familiar with the original film from 1974, but of course, you know, th that's the world that we are living in. So if you're expecting Texas Chainsaw, although that didn't have a lot of blood, if anything, either. But in terms of the rest of the franchise, if you're expecting Terrifier, if you're expecting Friday the 13th, if that's what you want, then you will probably be disappointed. Uh, but every decision we made was intentional. Every creative choice we made was on purpose because we are following the universe that we are connected to, right? So it has to feel like it lives in the same universe. We can't deliver a Terrifier, Texas Chainsaw style film because it's going to feel very disconnected from, from where we came from. So we're more psychological, slow burn, scary mood and atmosphere than we are Texas Friday or Terrifier. So, uh, but you know, to your point, right? You're like, ah, nah, just, ah, it just wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me. Well, that's okay. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Different strokes for different folks. Um, all right. Did I get all the super chats? Did I get all the super chats? I think people that, that uh, will like what we've done and like what we're doing the most obviously are Black Christmas fans, right? I mean, obviously that's, you know, it, but that's the same with any, you know, film really, right? Who's going to like scream six the most well probably scream fans <laughs> although they can also be the hardest on you too they can also be the hardest on you too um all right so i have got all i have got all the super chats that's good i have i haven't missed any i thought for sure i was going to miss some but apparently i haven't okay i'm um, still here i'm just responding to a client no problem for dude. a shoot that I, for a shoot that i'm doing tomorrow no problem. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Why does the stream keep falling back at me? Maybe it's when I switch out. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, got all the super chats. That is good. Uh, let me see. Uh, Cal LK says, did you guys check out Valentine Bluffs, a bloody Valentine fan film? No, I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it. Uh, I'll have to check it out. Richie Rich says, Dave, I'm going to add you as a friend on Facebook tomorrow, uh, tonight or tomorrow. Well, um, Richie, excuse me, Richie Rich, nothing personal. I don't accept friend requests on my personal account from people I don't know. So just viewers on the channel, there has to be some sort of relationship there. There has to be some sort of connection that, that we've had. If I did that, I would have like 200 and I, I kid you not, I'd have like 2,500 friends 
and my feed would be clogged up from people I don't know. Uh, and so I don't do that. If you want to follow me on Facebook, though, then go to the link in the description and follow me at Many Things Dave McRae. That's where I post. I don't really post on my personal page anyway. Every now and then I will, but I hardly ever do. If you want to keep up to date with what's going on with me and the channel and all that kind of jazz, follow me at Many Things Dave McRae Facebook link in the description. If you, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's down there as well. Instagram, it's down there as well. Nothing personal. It's not personal. It's just that, you know, I don't know the, you know, I don't know you. I don't know, you know, these people that, that try to add me. I get it. I appreciate it very much. I think it's cool. But if you really want to be connected to me, like seriously, if you really want to be connected to me, follow me at many things because that's where I post all the time. And if you follow me there already, you know that, like, you know, that's where I always post. I think I had like three or four posts today. So, um, cool. Uh, happy Sanjo sends in $2 and says, why is, why is she thrown in the basement and not killed? Well, I can't tell you that happy. I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that. That's a, that's a, well, you thought you were going to get an answer out of me. Happy Sanjo. I mean, I appreciate your moxie. I appreciate you attempting to find, I can't tell you that. Is there an answer? Well, there certainly is an answer. Absolutely. Well, you find out you will, you will find out. But I can't tell you that. We got to raise the money first. Then we can tell you. Yeah. Static sends in $2. Thank you, Static. And says, uh, hey, Dave, how has your wife and kid been doing, man? Uh, well, I don't. Well, I'm not married officially, but I've been with my lady for many years. So for all intents and purposes, she's my wife. Um, but we don't have any kids. We don't have any kids. So unless you're talking about Veda, our little cat, Veda. Veda! Come here and say hello. I don't know where she is. Uh, my black cat, my black panther. Maybe that's who you're talking about. But no, I don't. I don't have any kids. But uh, we're doing good. We're doing good. Hopefully, hopefully you're doing well. Happy, uh, or excuse me, uh, static. Um, <laughs> Sebastian says, "Dave, spoil it." I can't do that. If I spoil everything, there's no reason to raise the money. You, you kind of no. We can't do that. We got to raise the money, folks. May the first Indiegogo campaign drops. May the first. May the 1st, folks, May the 1st, Indiegogo campaign. Mark your calendars, throw those coins into your piggy bank and start saving now. We got to raise that money. I don't know what the budget's going to be yet. We're going to be working on that and the campaign in between now and May the 1st, but we're going to need to raise that. I mean, it's going to be, I can tell you right now, it's going to be no less than $60,000 what it was before. It, it, it might be even a bit more. So, uh, but I believe we can do it. I believe we can do it. We did it once before. We're going to do it again, baby. You see any uh, comments there, Tony? You want to uh, mm. snag? Or are you still talking to your client? I don't want to interrupt if you're still talking to your client. No, keep going. I'm good. Okay. No problem. Uh, let's see here. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, a very generous super chat of $20 comes in. Thank you, George Stegall. Stegall? Stegall? Very much appreciated. Says, hi, Dave and Tony. Today is my birthday. Would you wish me a happy birthday and send me some words of encouragement? I need them. One of your butt Daves would be great. Thank you both for all the great content. Well, listen here. George, life is tough. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what's on your plate. Nor do I need to know, right? It's personal. I don't even know that. But just know that the sun will rise. The sun will set. Tomorrow will come. And you will be okay. Take a deep breath. You've got this. Do your best. It's not easy, but do your best to surround yourself with people that can lift you up. Surround, your, surround yourself with people you can trust who, who may be give you that warm sort of nostalgic kind of cozy, you know, somebody that's not new in your life, somebody that you can rely on, somebody you can trust. You know, for me, if I'm looking for a friend that I, I need to do that with, it's, it's Bruce. I've known him since we were 12, right? Since we were 12. You know what I mean? Maybe you've got somebody like that in your life. Maybe you don't. And if you don't, just do your best to take a deep breath and just go, it's okay. I've got this. I've got this. Good. I've got this. I've had it before. I'm going to have it again. 
You know what I mean? Uh, and happy birthday, my man. Happy birthday. But day, but George. Tony, anything you'd like to say to George? It's his birthday today and he needs some encouragement. Happy birthday, George. Um, yeah, like Dave said, you know, we, um, life's, life, life fucking sucks sometimes, unfortunately. That's yeah. just, that's just, and it's probably not what you want to hear, but I'm going to be as real as, 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 as I can, true. can right now. Um, it's constantly dealing, dealing shit to you that just, you know, you sit there and you're like, what the fuck really? But like Dave said, at the end of the day, um, you do get through it. Um, you don't see it in the moment, you know what I mean? Um, but eventually you do, you know, you, you do get through it. It doesn't feel that way. Cause you're always, it feels like, you know, it's not this, it's, it's something else and you know, whatever and whatnot. And, um, I don't know what did he say what he was going through. Sorry, I, I, no, I kind of no, 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 heard no, no. a little no, bit of I, that. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think he said that. That's what no, I thought. So no. whatever, I don't know how deep whatever it is that you're going through. Um, you know, and and there's really no measurement. You know what I mean? There's no measurement of you know because everybody no. who's dealing with something, it's a, it's personal um, to them. It's real to it's them. It's personal. It's it's real to you exactly. So um, you know, I never like to sit there and say. Um, <laughs> Look, you know who has look look what cody said <laughs> cody, in the, in the, i know right <laughs> hey it's true life fucking sucks sometimes it unfortunately does. it's it's print it, that it, on a t-shirt you, you should print that on really a t-shirt and sell it that, that, sell it life fucking sucks sometimes unfortunately yeah. It, yeah. Does. it does um i've been there you know what i mean i've been in that headspace uh believe it or not i'm there in that headspace probably more frequent frequently um, then you guys know, you know, on a yearly mm. basis, it's, it, it's, there's always something you're dealing with. Um, yeah. you know, I just, I have a good way of, you know, keeping my personal life, obviously very, you know, personal and not really, you know, let myself out there, uh, and, and telling people, but yeah, dude, trust me. You, I mean, you did, we all deal with it. So, yeah. um, you know, and we, it's constant. It's, it's, it's constant. Believe me, I wish, I wish, you know, the one thing I will say this, you know, and not to get all into like religion stuff and, and stuff, but, you know, when I meet God one day, I'm going to look at him and say, okay, if we only get one shot at this around the planet, around the sun, I mean, you know, in our lifetime, why the struggles, man? Like, why? Why the heartache? I mean, heaven better be so amazing that well, I don't even remember any of this nonsense that I had to go through. I mean, I appreciate life and I appreciate that I'm here and I'm going to guess it's all part of the divine plan that I've been listening to since I was I a have kid. an answer for you. Um, what? I have the answer. Let me first say, uh, sign off on, on George's chat by saying, George, in the wise words of Sylvester Stallone, no one is going to hit harder than life, but it ain't about how hard you hit. Hard it's you about hit. how yep. hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. And keep moving it's forward. It's about how much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. And it's true. No, look, um, I'm I'm not a religious person in 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 the sense of of I don't follow a, a, a particular religion, but I I do um, I'm a, a very open minded person. You know when it comes to the intelligence of the universe and 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 you know what it all means and the bigger picture. And let me just say that obviously we can't take anything with us, so all the material things we can't take with us. Right. But if there is something that we do take, and, and listen, if consciousness produces the brain, excuse me, if brain produces consciousness, uh, which we still like, don't if know. consciousness produces the brain? No, no. <laughs> if, if, if brain produces, and, and listen, any any neurologist will, will I mean, I mean, but but it's never been 100% proven. We, we, we still to this day, we've never been able to objectively 100% prove that the brain produces consciousness consciousness awareness um it is assumed and 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 absolutely but if you look this up i'm not kidding i've, I've you know i've read all about this a hundred percent hundred percent and uh but if it does or if it doesn't and there is a disconnect between consciousness and the mind and the psyche and you know there's there's a difference you know then what is what is something 
what's one thing that we could take with us if if we do go i, I mean our body dies what happens are, are we a spirit a soul light i don't know i don't want to get into debate on that but whatever what is something we could take because we can't take anything material so what is something we could take with us and i've always thought well we take what we've learned and so that's what i was just about to say i hope heaven is well the best version of the life that I wish, or like the best version of myself, the healthiest, you know, maybe it's, we create it. It's our heaven. It's what we make of it. You know what right. I mean? And, That's and, what I'm hoping. Right. And, and so I'm just saying now, I, now if the brain produces consciousness, well then that might be difficult, but, 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 but who knows? Right. And, and I'm not, again, I'm not, I don't want to get into a deep philosophical discussion about yeah. it, but I just mean that, that, you know, I, maybe that's what it's all about, right? We're here to learn. So we have to go through the struggles and the ups and the downs and the relationships and the fights and the, this and the good times, and the bad, because we need to, it, it makes, it does make you wiser and stronger and more knowledgeable. And you take that to wherever you take, because you ain't taking your car, you know, you're not taking your computer, you're not taking your phone. So what the fuck are you taking? Well, the only thing we could take maybe is stuff we learn. That's it. It's fascinating. It's interesting. Yeah, Very interesting it to say the least. Um, all right. A couple more super chats mm -hmm. came in here. Ooh, a bunch of them actually. Uh, Simon Mills sends in five pounds. Thank you, Simon. It says, be careful guys. Scream six killer reveal footage has been leaked online. Watch out if you don't want it spoiled. Same with all the viewers here. Yes, I've heard about that. So be very careful. Apparently. Well, thankfully, I Thankfully, I don't really watch any of that shit. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, like, no, yeah, yeah. I, heard I don't go that. into that rabbit hole unless, unless it's like at an actual trailer. Mm. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yes. Be careful out there, folks. It's a tricky one. Media Storm, I like that name, sends in five dollars. Says I saw Halloween Five last night, and the ending was so intense and scary, with Loomis yelling at Michael to go home in the woods. Michael chasing Jamie. Well, you know what, Media Storm, I am really glad that you really like that movie. I don't like the movie. Um, there's moments in the movie that I like. Um, one of the moments in the movie that I like is the laundry shoot scene. I, I, I think that's a cool scene. Overall, uh, it's no secret that obviously I have uh, busted Halloween 5's balls on this chat uh, or on this channel for a long time. All in good fun, of course. Uh, I see it is also your first super chat, so that's really cool. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. But I really mean, I'm, I'm glad that you like the movie. I mean that. Uh, you are all, even though I like to bust its balls, you're a Halloween fan. You're welcome here. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. I'm not gonna be one of those people. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't like the movie. Oh, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> you gotta stay away from those people, man. You gotta stay away from those people. <laughs> Uh, Happy oh, Sanjo shit. sends in $2. Oh, wait, did I miss one? No, I didn't. Happy Sanjo sends in $2. Says, uh, alternate, alternate ending and special features, stretch goal. Uh, talking about the Billy 2 campaign. Uh, no, I don't think there's going to be an alternate ending. You, you, you mean an alternate ending in chapter two? I don't think so. I mean, unless something changes between now and when we go to camera. Uh, but we're pretty set on, you know, completing the story. And, and we do have an ending. Um, so I don't think there'll be anything. I mean, there'll be special features on the Blu-ray. But in terms of alternate ending, no. There is no alternate ending for chapter one. Uh, that was sort of where we always wanted to end, end it. We took that risk. If we didn't have any desire to do a chapter two, we would have ended it when you saw Emma in the back seat and the bag on the head and you, you know, you zoom in and, you know, the swell of the carol of the bells and you cut to black and then we would have rolled credits. And we could have done that, um, but we, we, we took the risk and we showed you a little more because we were confident in the in, in the quality that we were producing and hoping that people want to see how it all ends. Do you want to see Sam fight back? Man. Do you want to see her fight with her grandmother? Do you want to see, you know, the, what happens next and, and, and all that. And it gets creepy and it gets dark and scary. And, and so, um, a stretch goal, what would be a stretch goal? Well, um, you know, maybe certain cast members, uh, that, that, that we may want to be able to include maybe, um, you know, the, the logistics of, of, you know, certain sequences, maybe a scene that we might have had to take out. We can add back in now because we meached our goal and a stretch goal. I don't know specifically yet what the stretch goals will be and what, 
they would be pertaining to if we reach them in terms of what we will be able to add back in. I don't know yet. It's still very early in the process of building the campaign. Campaign launches May 1st, still a few months away. Um, but you'll know once it launches, it will all be there. So, uh, yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, ba, 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 ba. Media Storm follows up with $2 and says, you and Tony seeing Scream 6 in 3D? I can't wait. Um, I actually, I think we're going to do what we did the last time. Are we going to wait? I'll wait. Yeah, it's going to be a couple of months probably though. I Yeah, it's true. I don't know. We'll, I don't know. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. I haven't thought about that. We'll figure it out. I don't yeah. want to see it in 3D though. I don't want to see it in 3D. No, I probably not in 3D. I hate seeing movies in 3D that were not shot for 3d avatar yes because that's it's the experience it's it's built for 3d that's the whole point i don't want to fucking go see scream in 3d i don't yeah, care yeah. about that shit they just want the money we'll see i don't know if i'm gonna go see it in theaters i don't i don't know we'll see that's just it that's just it yeah. uh sean sheridan sends in five euros and says do you think with all the legacy sequels we might see an official black christmas legacy sequel someday uh did you see banshees of inner sheeran i haven't seen banshees of inner sheeran yet although it does look quite good uh will we see an official black christmas legacy sequel one day probably not probably not and um you know what's really cool about it's me billy is that um you know because we you know the only thing, look, if, if, if I would love to do it, I would love to do it. And, you know, you could, depending on how long chapter two is, ends up being, you could put chapter two and one together and sell that. You could. Um, the production value is professional. It's, you know, all the way through. I mean, you could totally do it. It doesn't mean they would want to do it. They may want to reshoot the whole thing. And and it, if I was ever advised on it, I would say, well, I think you take you you do it this way. You build a legacy sequel in the ways that we did and, and you get us to do it. Um, you know, but in terms of it being official, like recognized by the studio and released by them, probably not. They tried to do it in 2019, failed miserably. Um, I don't think Black Christmas is a popular enough IP to do that. Um, if they were smart, and I'll be totally honest with you, if if they were smart, they would. Once it's me, Billy Chap, and and I mean this, I I, I mean this in a, in a in a in a in a purely objective way. Once it's me, Billy Chapter Two is done, and I'm I'm saying once because I'm trying to think positive that we will raise the money. Once it's me, Billy Chapter Two is done. Again, depending on how long it is, but let's say it ends up, like the first one is 42 minutes with credits. Without credits, it's it's 38 minutes. So it would be without credits. So you have 38 minutes. Let's say plus another 30 minutes. I mean, it might be a bit short, but it might be like an 80 minute film, 85 maybe with credits or whatever. Fucking slap those two things. You know, pay us. Let you know. Let's get the rights. Pay us, slap those two things together, and officially release it. You know, release it on there you go. Prime or whatever. Like, don't re let, you, you don't have to release it in the theaters, but but you could release it together on fucking Prime, Some or, streaming, whatever. Yeah, streaming, you know, yeah. Netflix, you know, whatever. Put them together and release it. That's what I say you do as a as a low budget indie legacy sequel to Black. No, nope, you know what's gonna happen. They'll do it themselves and probably steal your idea or some shit or whatever. Oh, I hope not. You know, I hope not. Because you don't have the right, so you're in a nope. catch-22. You can't sue them. No. Nope. You know, nope. and unfortunately, but, that's just fucking Hollywood for you, that's right? That's it. But what's really cool, though, I will say this. What's really cool, and this comes especially from Black Christmas fans, and I've had people say this, and it's really cool, is there's a lot of people that have said, you know, even though it's not official, um, it's professionally made it looks professional it sounds professional the acting's good you know the quality's good that like like it, it it feels like the original movie it feels connected to the universe as far as i'm concerned this is the sequel and i've had a lot even though it's not official it's not officially recognized i get that it's still really cool to see people taking their blu-rays and putting them on the shelves next to the original that's really cool you know and uh and it, it was really cool to see people this past year watching it's me bill uh, excuse me watching the original and then watching it's me billy i think that's so cool and you can do it and it plays really well if you've never done it watch the original and then watch our movie and it feels really connected it, it, it we i, yeah. I I think we did a really good job of that. And chapter two is going to feel the same way. You know, it, it, it picks up immediately where chapter one left off. So we don't fast forward two years into the future. We're picking up right back at that moment and just pew, 
continuing. So it's, uh, gets crazy. gets crazy. Um, and thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Uh, media storm sends in $2. Thank you. Media storm says, Dave, Tony, you ever had to call the cops for help? I have not. Tony, have you? Had to call the police for help. No, I'm trying to think though. I know some people have called the cops for help because of <laughs> Be- because of you. Because of you. Because sure, of sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, doing stupid shit as a teenager, but um <laughs> Cody yeah, unfortunately Cody, Cody's like, go take a shit, crunch one out. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's when uh people are being little that's for like, you know, yeah. the people that are being assholes or trolls or whatever. I'm just like, dude, shut the fuck up and go crunch one out. You need to just go crunch one out. That's your problem. You need to go sit on the toilet and crunch one out. You know what? If you're feeling, just go crunch one out. That's what you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think how many times have I had the, had to have the cops call on me? A couple times I've had the cops call on me. Not uh, proud well, of it. I mean, not, so, my, so often. not my finest moments as a teenager but you know it is what it is you're a stupid kid and you do stupid shit and whatever you know it's just i you know all i can say is this you know ice cube said it very true when you are a product of your environment Mm. it is what it is and i was a product of my environment and what was surround what i was surrounded by and you know the people i the people i hung out with and um i'm not making excuses for it um i'm just happy that i got out of the situation got my life back on track that's right done well for myself you so. have done well from your uh for yourself because it could have gone a whole other way you I, know and dude just, you've done very yeah. well for yourself you should be very proud of yourself i mean tony had the cops call him and so so often that i saw tony on 17 episodes <laughs> of cops i mean it was just a you know, bad boy no bad i never boys. made it, never you never made it to cops i'm positive i saw you handcuffed though on the back of the cruiser God, it felt <gasps> like it uh, no, I'm just kidding. Because it wasn't just me; it was my sister too. Like we were yeah. just, unfortunately, we were just those kids in the neighborhood that you just. I mean, I, I often wonder, I, and like we joke about it, like, man, what the fuck did our neighbors think? Because the cops were at our house so Ooh. much. Like, boop, 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 boop. yeah, Woo. Oh, I understand. It is I understand. what it is. It is what it is. Yep, for sure. Uh, is, is it? Uh, Sayaran, Sayaran. I'm not sure how to pronounce your first name. My apologies. Sayaran Mulgrew, Sayaran Mulgrew. My apologies. Sends in five pounds. Thank you. Says, hoping for it's me, Billy, chapters one and two Blu rays. I wasn't around for the first campaign, but will definitely be supporting this one as much as I can. Well, first of all, thank you for the super chat. Really appreciate that. Thank you for watching and thank you for saying that. We're going we're gonna to need all the support we can get, like the first time around, right? We aren't Freddie. We aren't Jason. We aren't Michael. It doesn't sell itself. So we definitely need people to step up and, and, uh, and help us out. So we really appreciate that. And yes, it's entirely possible. Don't know yet for sure. Now, I can certainly tell you that you will be able to pick up chapter two on Blu-ray. Yes, 100%. Uh, Will you be able to get chapter one on its own? Don't know yet. It may be a situation where you get chat, where there's a perk where you can get chapter two on its own, or there's a perk where you can get chapter one and two on its own. Do you know what I mean? We might do it that way. Not sure yet. It all depends on how much we're able to raise too, because you have to keep in mind that, you know, authoring a lot of Blu-rays is a lot of money, right? So, um, but it's entirely possible. I've taken mental notes on how many times people have asked me about it. Um, so I'm like, okay, there's a lot of people asking about it. So it may be something we put in there. Maybe it's a perk we add later, like a secret perk, a surprise perk or something. Of course, I've told you about it now, so I guess not a surprise, but I don't know yet, but we are working on the perks right now. So it may very well be one that winds up in there. Um, We've, we, we are listening. We are listening to the fans. We are listening to the fans. So we shall see. We shall see. Uh, and I appreciate all the support, man. Thanks so much. Um, let me see here. How are we here? We're uh, another, we'll go another 10 minutes or so. Take us to two hours, I guess. You okay with that? Yeah. Uh, okay. I think I got all the super chats. I think you I sure. Did. Oh, no, 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 I didn't. No, I didn't. There's quite a few that came in. Yep. Edward Nito sends in 10 US dollars. Thank you, Edward. And says, sup, my dudes. Uh, do you guys have a favorite VHS cover that scared or intrigued you as a kid? For me, it was the 1973 TCM cover. Streaming, uh, do you mean the, t- the 74? Um, I think the film came out in 74, right? 
the the Texas Chainsaw so. Massacre came out in 74. Uh, streaming is more efficient, but I do miss the experience of renting movies. Well, I could not agree with you there. Uh, oh, sorry, I could not agree with you more there. Um, you know, there are certain VHS covers that intrigued me. I know Tony is going to grab this. Uh, hang on. He's grabbing this uh, original Texas Chainsaw Massacre VHS cover, the very first VHS he ever bought. Here it is. There it is. That Hold it up is. to the that's camera. That's the very first, very, very first VHS that I ever bought. It's in a seal case, so that's why it's. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hold it's it up to the camera. Um, Hold it like, no, like r- right up to the camera. Hold it right up to the camera. Yeah. 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 There you go. Very cool. Very cool. So I got that when I was seven years old. Uh, I didn't know what it was. I just thought this, the cover, her eyes, leather face. Like, I just like, yes. that's cool. Gave it to my cousin said, can you buy this? <laughs> Cause I was seven. I couldn't buy it at the time. He was old yeah, enough yeah, to yeah. buy it. And it's it was birthday cool. money. So, um, I bought it actually. Cause I, where I got it at, um, my uncle used to, um, have a small, uh, VHS rental shop next to his auto garage. He had a mechanic shop right. where he would do like, he was kind of like the early version of Dominic Toretto. Instead of a sandwich shop, he had a VHS shop, you know, and next to his garage where he was fixing cars and shit. Mm. And we'd hang out there all the time, you know, under the hood and stuff. Um, and just, you know, doing tinkering on vehicles or whatever, or if he had a job, but when my birthday came around, um, and, uh, yeah, I, and my cousin uh, who I was very close with gave me some birthday money, gave Tim a sad, this is what I want. Got it for me. And booyah, that was the very first VHS that I ever owned. And, uh, it's, it's got some miles on it. It's the, the cover's a little warped, but I didn't know what the fuck it was. Mm. I just thought it looked cool. And yeah. yeah, um, it was the second, uh, horror film that I saw because the first was Nightmare on Elm Street. The second was, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I still hadn't seen Friday the 13th yet. Obviously didn't see Halloween. Um, Very cool. You know, so yeah, that, that's it's cool to still have that original one that I bought as a kid in the 80s. You know, so. there's, uh, yes, there is. Uh, I don't know how quickly I can access it. Uh, let me see here. There's a box. There's a box over here that I usually keep all these things under my basement stairs. Uh, I have yep. a ton of boxes of VHS tapes and most of my VHS tapes are in immaculate condition like yours. Um, but I, I have a box in here that I haven't put away. It's sat in here for like months. And I just haven't put it away. And I think there's a couple in there that will answer your question. One that I don't own, but I always used to, that sticks with me as a kid is the cover for Fright Night with the face in the clouds mm, that always yes, stuck yes. with me. It always yes. stuck with me. I, I, I love that. And um, a couple of them, hang on a sec here, let me just see if I can get this. I think this is the right thing, although I don't know. Hang on a sec. I'm looking through them here. Just give me a second. Trying to find the, uh, the stuff. Come on, God damn it! Where are you, son of a bitch? Hang on a sec. I'm trying to find it. Uh, of course, of course, when you're trying to find it, you can never find. Okay, so this. <laughs> I think this was the first VHS tape I ever had. I think, I think. It's a little movie called Cloak and Dagger. Do you remember that? I won't be able to see it until you're on the. Oh, you're right. I can't you're right. See- you're right. Okay, well, I won't see, see it until it shows up on the delay. Right. You'll see it in a second here. It's Cloak and Dagger. It's got Dabney Coleman and uh, the kid from E.T. What's his name again? Uh, kid from E.T. Uh, I can't remember. What the fuck? Why am I blanking? Henry Thomas. And uh, Henry Thomas. Okay, this, there it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was a movie that I watched like on repeat like you wouldn't believe. And the tape, and this is original tape. I got this in like 1984. I was five. And I think this is my first VHS tape I ever owned. Now, this is not in great condition. I mean, the tape's fine, but in terms of the box, it's kind of frayed and falling sure. apart. Now, another thing that used to stand out to me is this cover of A Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Now, this is the original box from the 80s. It's got tape on it and everything. I know I just said that most of my VHS boxes are in perfect condition. Most of them are, but there's a couple that aren't. And these are a couple here that aren't. But this box always stood out to me. Is this one right here? You'll see it in a second. It's it's the cover of a Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two: Freddy's Revenge. I have that. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, have yeah. that. Yeah, and and this is a box that all. In fact, the only uh, Freddy movies I have on VHS still are 
Nightmare, Nightmare 2, and Nightmare 3. That's it. Those are the only ones that I have. I, I have one, two, and three as well. The original media boxes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Same. Yeah. Very cool. Same. Very cool. Um, um, so, yeah, I would say those are some that stand out for sure. That's a good question. That'd be a good show even. Uh, that'd be a fun VHS. show. Yeah, talking about VHS and showing our fucking shit. Um now, Media Storm follows up here and says something that is actually very true. S sends in $2. Thank you, uh, Media Storm, and says, Well, without context, Halloween 5's ending is creepy as hell. That is true. If you're not a big Halloween fan or you're a casual horror fan or a casual Halloween fan, it's a movie you've never seen, you're not necking deep into the weeds like all of us here, you just watch that movie on a whim, I get it. I get that. Yep, totally. I yep. get that for sure. Um, uh, you did miss one. Okay. I got it just in case when you get to it. Okay. I missed a couple here. Uh, Sean Sheridan sends in two euros and says, miss my previous super chat. I think did I Sean? I okay. got it. Oh, you got I it. Got it. If you need. Yeah. He, uh, he sends in five, I'm guessing euros, right? Is that right? Yes. I think, uh, do you think with all the legacy sequels, we might see an official black oh, no, I Christmas answered that. legacy? No, you did answer that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he did. I did answer Sean, that he one. did answer that one. Sorry, but I, I, you might have missed it. He he, he might have sent it in before I had answered it when I skipped over and then went back. It, it's entirely possible. Okay. I did answer it though, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you missed it, because maybe you're going to the washroom or something, just scroll back a little bit and you'll and you'll hear my answer. Um yep. I yeah, I don't I don't think um I don't think we will. I don't think we will see it. Uh an official official. But uh hey, yeah. you know, I mean, our films are available. Just saying. Um, God, yes. Uh, a big game show, $2, says, why isn't there a new Shrek film? It's so profitable. Well, apparently Eddie Murphy is uh, wants to do one. So I'm not a big Shrek fan. I, th I've, I think I've only I've seen the first one even... years ago. I'm not a big animation person. I've said that. Other than I've watched, obviously, a few of the Batman stuff. Um, yeah. Because yeah. uh, that's more my interest. However, having said that, I am very excited for the Mario Brothers movie because there's just mm. so much nostalgia with, with what I'm seeing from the Donkey Kong stuff to Mario right, Kart and right. stuff like that. Um, that looks like it's going to be a good time. That that may be where I throw my non. I'm against watching animation films. Um, I, I, I may have to sit down and watch that one because that one looks like it's going to be a fun movie. But yeah, I don't. If it's not Batman related, I really don't watch much animation stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is very profitable. And I think they probably will do another one. Edward Nito, $2 says, that's the one. Uh, that's the one, Edward. Oh, what what he, were we the, talking about? He's talking about the Chainsaw Massacre. Right, yes, the, right, 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 yeah. right. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, okay. I think I've got, uh, oh no, wait, uh, Taylor Paulson sends in $2. Thanks Taylor. And says, Dave, what do you think of GSP? Uh, I mean, George St. Pierre, he's my favorite. He, he's my favorite fighter of all time. Also, have you seen ACDC live at Dunnington? I became a drummer because of that show. Tony, I love Dick, Dick Warlock. <laughs> hey, to, to each his own, hey, man. To each his own, yeah. man. To each his own. And whatever floats your boat. If, if, hey, if you, if you like to putt from the rough, as uh, Matt Damon says in Goodwill Hunting, by all means, keep on putting. Hey, you know what? I, think, I, I mean, think it was I think it was good for Goodwill Hunting, right? Oh yeah, it is. He's know, talking is to the shrink. You putt from the rough. Not there my you problem. Go. There you go. <laughs> um, George St. Pierre. Uh, so I'm I'm a casual MMA fan. I mean, I, I I don't follow it religiously or anything like that. So yeah, I, I don't not like him. I mean, he was he was amazing. I mean, he was a uh, probably one of the great fighters you know in the history of the sport for sure so uh, and i think he even avenged his two losses i think he's got like 20 something wins two losses but he also avenged those losses so that means that he fought rematches with the two people that beat him and beat them back so even though he's he, he lost he's got two losses he avenged them so I, I i think that's what that means right i think so um yeah i think he's cool um and acdc live at donnington i'd have to, i've seen a lot of acdc vids so i'd have to I, I, I probably have. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I probably have. Yeah. I probably have. Uh, thanks, Taylor. I, I am going to... I am thinking, though, that I might go see Motley Crue again here uh, with John Five. I was really, I wasn't sure how I felt because when bands do this, when one of the members leave for whatever XYZ reason, they replace that member. You know, I've always been a firm believer, especially with Motley Crue, the core four, Mick, Tommy, Nikki, and Vince. 
Uh, but I've, I've seen some footage popping up here and I'm like, damn, they sound really good. I may just have to go see Motley Crue with John five because John five, he's, he was in Rob Zombie. He, he played for, for, for Rob Zombie a few years ago. He also played for someone else here too, not too long ago. Mm. He's a phenomenal guitarist, phenomenal guitarist. Um, and you're talking about Motley Crue. I mean, that's my baby. I've seen them like 10, 12 times in concert, um, you know, going back to 89, the Dr. Feelgood tour when I was a kid, um, you know, that, that, I mean, that they're my all time favorite band. And I was like, I know the reasons. I mean, Mick Mars, you know, he's, he, you know, he's, he's got his illness where he, the Duke can barely stand. Um, so I get why he, you know, they're replacing him, but I felt like, yeah, really like, do we, do we need to do this? Do we, but then seeing it now it's like he kind of just fits he fits in with the other three you know what i mean i think if it was someone else you know what i mean and because i was already familiar with him oh that's right thank you marilyn manson that's right ryan thank you um he you know because i knew of him with what he did with rob zombie already because you know i love rob zombie's music say what you want about his movies but his fucking music is great i love that mm -hmm. shit work i work out to it all the time um I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And then I saw it. I'm like, this is a good fit. Like he fits in with Motley Crue. He fits in with that style. He just, it's good. So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to go see them as much as I don't want to, but I really do want to. I'm going to go see them. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. No, you should. Yeah. You should, man. Yeah, I should. What the hell, you totally should. You totally should. Um, oh, right. I just, I just hope, Vin, I hope Vince Neil doesn't go like, eh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know i mean that's what he sounds like when he sings now yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. every other word or some shit I'm like come on vince just sing the fucking song right 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 <laughs> um all right uh and just a reminder again voiceover workshop i'm doing this saturday and sunday over zoom 1 to 4 p.m each day massively discounted i would not give this kind of a discount to anywhere else but my viewers uh who follow me on facebook Facebook, and of course here on the channel, 125 US dollars, 125 dollars for both days together, one to 4 p.m. Eastern Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's a complete introductory into the world of professional voiceover. The first day we learn about agents and demos and movie trailers, network promos, commercials, animation, narration, all that fun stuff. And then of course the second day we work on some scripts and I give some feedback and direction, all that kind of fun stuff. And yeah, it's just going to be a lot of fun. So I still have some spots open. I'm hoping to keep a, a, a maximum of like at least 10 to 12. I don't want to go beyond that. Um, and uh, But there's still some spots open. So if that interests you and you want to get in on it, send me a direct direct message via my Facebook page uh, in the description to many things Dave McRae. Send me a DM there. If you don't have social media, send me an email to the voice man with two N's, T-H-E-V-O-I-C-E-M-A-N-N, -N, the voice man at gmail.com and we'll get you signed up and I'll tell you how to submit payments. So uh, hopefully I'll see some of your faces there because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I've been asked about it, uh, about, you know, the industry, how it all works, all that kind of stuff. And we're going to go over it on Saturday and Sunday, this Saturday and Sunday. And if it's successful successful blah, blah, blah. speaking of voiceover blah, blah, blah. um i will uh, i'll run another one in the future so uh we'll see how this works uh so yeah tony any last things you want to say no nah, i'm good this was fun you're good this was a good stream man this was a good stream yeah. all right folks that's gonna do it for oh, wait. Uh -oh. taylor taylor Paulson, Paulson. Paulson. Taylor's, you guys rock right at the go. buzzer right at the buzzer thanks taylor appreciate that man that's going to do it for episode 180 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. Comment below and let Tony and I know your thoughts on the I Know What You Did Last Summer sequel in development with Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prinze Jr. Start the discussion into the comment section below. We would love to know. If you want to follow me on social media, you can. There are my links. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all in the description. Check them out until your heart's content. Tony, there he is there on Facebook at Anthony Michael 1579 we'll see you next week Monday night 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time unless unless we need to move it again you never know <laughs> you never know all right folks never know you never know we'll talk to you soon have a great rest of your week <laughs> <laughs>